So you're saying it was a jizz heist? Yes. Yeah, but yes, basically that that yes, is that was, is exactly what happened in the Watchmen show. Is there was a jizz heist? The 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 entire the entire point of the Watchmen show is Grand Theft come. <sighs> not 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 the entire purpose, but definitely one of the the driving forces. Yes. And I'm still going to say it's better than this shit. I saw the first two episodes of Watchmen. I saw part of the last. Oh episode no, you you didn't see how horrible it got. Like there I, was from what I badness. saw, it was, it was better than this. From what I'm I more saw. willing, I'm more willing to entertain eight of my hours going to watching racist Watchmen propaganda than I am watching the bastardization of the Halo series. Because I I, wow. I I care a lot more about about Halo. And I will legitimately, I will legitimately say, I think it's worse. I think the show is well, worse in every I'm, way. My, at my, least, at least the Watchmen show had some good dialogue here and there. Okay. Well, no, like and... here, here's my point. I I would rather just watch the stupidity and actually laugh at the 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 propaganda that they would be putting through it, rather than watch the worst possible dialogue in the fucking world. Combo oh, the dialogue with, in the Halo show is is, is trashed here. Com comboed with probably some of the worst acting I think I've seen in a TV show to date. It, it, I mean, the acting is is serviceable in in some areas. Is it you know anything to write home about? No. Also, can you still hear me? Because my headset just took a yes. Shit. Yes, we can hear you. Can still okay. hear you. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I, from what I saw of the HBO Watchmen and what I've seen of Paramount's Halo, I, I'd rather watch Watchmen. All right, then we're my, that no, not, no, do not take that as a challenge. Do not, yeah, no, 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 we're doing Mike, it. I've already, I've already been no, scarred. No, I agree with Mike. I'll actually sit no, through it. For, I've already no, no. been scarred <laughs> by it, motherfucker. Through, I will sit through an episodic equivalent of what I am watching in Halo with Mike with Watchmen. I will take that right now. Because I am only four episodes in on this Halo series, and I think it is the worst thing to be brought to my eyes. I have literally pirated this, and I want my time and money back. This is this is the equivalent, okay? It's like I've already been shot, and then Mike is coming up here with like, look, you got you got a 45 in your chest, but this 22 isn't gonna hurt anywhere near as bad. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put the 22 in your <laughs> chest as well. No, I'm not taking the second bullet. You're just building up a tolerance, aren't you? Come exactly. on. Eventually, Eventually I'll work so my way up to my body, you'll be bulletproof. Uh, oh, my God. Or you'll be dead from heavy metal poisoning. Either way. Is Netflix's <sighs> Cowboy... The, the, the question is, is Netflix's Cowboy Bebop better? And I refuse I to never saw Cowboy it. Bebop. So I, 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 never I can't it. tell. I have such a respect for the original <laughs> series of Cowboy that I refuse to actually watch the show. Yeah, I never really the, felt the need to like ever go into that just because of like it, anytime you take an anime and you you bring it into live action. No, I should say I, sh I shouldn't say anytime, but most of the time, it doesn't hold up. It, it, I no. would say you're looking at a ninety five percent failure rate. Yet they still want to do it for live action anime adaptations. Ninety five percent fail rate. I I I would agree on that. The only ones that really come to my mind that I actually liked. That weren't done. That weren't fan films. That's the qualifier here. That were not fan films, is probably just the G uh, the GTO live action adaptation. I, I can't think of. It. I, I heard. Uh, the Roni I Kenshin think weren't the good. Samurai X ones kind of popular. The, yeah, that's the what I was Roni. just saying. The Roroni Kenshin okay. ones. Okay. Um, I heard those were pretty good, but I've never been able to like find them. Like back when I was into that show, because back then, you know, that you didn't have the internet piracy at the rate that it was. So, I mean, I could probably find it a lot easier now. But anyway, live action anime abominations aside, we have to talk about the worst adaptation I have ever fucking seen and the continuation of our goddamn suffering. Well, you're suffering. I chose my suffering because I chose, because I chose my... to dip out on that. No, you, no, yeah, you, you did. You, you dipped out. It, it, like normally, Mike has no problem. Everybody who's watching this knows for a fact Mike has no problem watching horrible, horrible things. Well, see, here, here's, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Just to throw this out there as another reason why I did not want to watch it was, I didn't want to watch it as a group. I'm okay with watching it by myself. Because then I, I then I can just like psychoanalyze it from like an objective point of view and not actually you know absorb the trauma. 
that that, that I can kind of just separate the two, and I can keep I can like write shit down and do stuff like that. It's like kind of kind of like doing an actual like when, doing work. yeah. When you watch it in a group, everybody kind of has to groan and and get their way through. That's really kind of what I mean. Yeah, I would have been much um, more open to maybe watching it maybe with one other so, person, maybe two. Oh, so I didn't even I, know there. Uh, so quickly check into the chat, uh, Alita. Yes, I completely forgot. I, I forgot to mention. Yes, that. that's what I was and saying. I earlier. didn't even know there was an initial D live action. I would actually be able to watch that because that is probably just a better Fast and the Furious. So like I was saying earlier, I, I say there's about a 95% failure rate. They, they have occasionally in a 5% bracket of everything that's been brought to either live adaptation or an actual movie version. Only 5% are ever worth watching or passable that they are enjoyable to watch. And I would say even out of that, a lot of them don't really deal a whole lot with live action. They might do mocap, they might do some kind of animated setup, but very rarely do the, the live adaptations work. It is like a one in a thousand chance of you actually getting a good one. Mm -hmm. So specifically here, since we missed a week or two because I had some health issues, uh, <laughs> we are going to be talking about Halo live action episodes two, three, and four. I have not you, seen any of these. Yeah, you get to you get to sit here and yeah, Mike enjoy is, the Mike is our odd man out. So we're gonna play the odd man out game where we describe oh, things to to that happen in this show, and Mike has to guess whether or not this actually happened or did not happen unfortunately we've told him quite a few things about the show already yeah so you're gonna you're gonna have to dress some things up i didn't know they made a go go 13 live action i want to see that they made a go go 13 live that's action? what uh these jc denton uh, yeah jc denton saying yeah okay both of them apparently there's multiple so eh, that would be interesting i like that so i guess the 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 the, the, the grievances we have okay so we gotta we gotta delve into the plot first okay the plot for these last three episodes and this whole season is that Master Chief found Forerunner Artifact. It starts unlocking his memories. Master Chief goes on a feelings quest and then discovers an ancient Forerunner Artifact that was buried like five minutes from his childhood home. Acid. That, that's, that's the plot for the whole fucking show so far. The Master Chief has not fired a single fucking bullet in outside approximately of... three hours and 45 minutes. Well, I was going to say, outside of the first episode, he hasn't done anything. Mm -hmm. The man the man has we been the opposite of Chief for the last three out of the four episodes of a Halo show. Yeah, the, the in the first 15 <clears throat> minutes, we see him kill like a couple of elites. And then that's it. That's the last time we see him fire a bullet. And basically the last time we see him wear the armor. Because this man is just not wearing this suit. Throughout, like In episode two, he wore the suit for maybe five minutes. In episode three, he wore the suit for maybe two minutes. I would say we're probably closer to a, a solid minute, if that. He actually surprised us in the fourth episode by wearing it for, I think, somewhere in the vein of five minutes. I thought in yeah. episode four, we were going to get maybe 12 seconds of time with him with the helmet on. And he actually surprised me by keeping it on for a little bit longer. Than that. <laughs> there was literally a part in the fourth episode, right? Where he puts the helmet on and we're like, <laughs> okay, he's going to take it off in 15 seconds. The scene transitioned. No, no, no. He immediately took it the fuck off. We're not going to be no, five thought, seconds no, of helmet time. No, we were saying, me and Chan were saying, like, we, <clears throat> we might get a minute of him having it. Maybe not even that. And yeah, as soon as it transitioned, it was gone. It's like he maybe had it on his head, resting, not pulling it off or putting it on, maybe a second or two before the scene change. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is, it, it is just downright disrespectful. That and between the it's props, still not as bad as Master Cheeks. Beyond the Ooh. fact that every single prop in here looks like it was made at the five dollar bargain bin of styrofoam and plastic. I don't think I've seen a worse condition. And, and I know the joke is made all the time that fans will do a better job at making cosplay suits than the actual companies that do this. This is something I would challenge a fifth grader to go watch and make armor that looks more accurate. And I guarantee you they would do it maybe at the same quality or a little bit better as fifth graders. 
Dude, go to any convention and you will see motherfuckers cosplaying Samus, Spartans, Stormtroopers better than this shit. Because this suit is, and we've been keeping count almost of the amount of holes and cracks that you can see on this fucking suit as this show goes on. Like the, the fucking production value in this thing. This is $10 million an episode. Okay. Yep. $10 million an episode, and they can't even duct tape the fucking suit back together. Like the 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 arms in the suit, especially are what really pissed me off because every time we see him put that suit on, the shoulder plating and the the uh, the bicep plating just keeps falling off. Like we you can see it like it, when he's walking, you can see the shoulder pl plates like shifting and bobbing and falling the fuck off like the, the the level of quality control in this show that you have pieces borderline falling off this man's armor and somebody can't go wait a minute cut get the super glue we got to go fix our million dollar prop nobody does anything no so, nothing so i will say one thing and this is kind of a little bit of a theory i have um, I have a feeling the helmet they actually have him wear for the the exterior scenes where it's supposed to show him as Master Chief. I have a feeling the plastic they used for his visor is so obstructed he actually can't see what he is doing when he has it on. And the reason it, I'm might, say it that, might be possible. The reason I say that is because in episode, uh, I believe it's episode three of the batch where he goes to the planet. He That's has four. Uh, or four. Sorry, he has a part where he is in his own home, his old home, and he's walking around. But you can see via the way that he's walking, it's very unsteady paces that he's taking. As if he doesn't want to take a full step because he's afraid he's going to bang into a prop that's yeah, in the he's air. Got a, he's got a small environment. <clears throat> the The actor, uh, Pablo Schreiber, I think is the name of the actor who's portraying Master Chief. Um, he stated in some of the behind the scenes content and the promotional material that he had a very, very hard time moving in the suit. And it, the, the, the funnier, like the funny part about it is whenever they do like a long shot of the chief and a long shot is uh, wherever the subject is fully in focus from head to toe. Um, whenever they do a long shot of the chief, you can see the comically large platform shoes that they put on this man. They got like three, they got disco go-go boots on the master chief in this fucking thing. And it's, so those aren't exactly the easiest thing in the world to walk in, let alone when you have this very restrictive suit and the weirdly pronounced thong that they gave the Master Chief. I don't know why he's wearing a thong, but there were many occasions where we got a close up of this thing riding straight into the Master Chief's booty hole. I, I think I would be more offended about the, the thong if it wasn't for the fact that we had full cheek shots of Chief in episode three. Yes, in episode three, you get to see Master Chief's bloody asshole. You get you, see, you get to see the Master Cheeks. And you get to, like, it, it, there's a blink and you miss it penis shot. Yeah. Well, again, between the fact that they're, they're trying to do the same thing to this, they're wanting to do Lord of the Rings, which is like almost every episode has some kind of nudity shot, discounting episode one. <laughs> Like episode two, we got to see the uh, the the human covenant chick going like a side nude thing when she's changing into human clothes. Yeah, we got to see a a borderline open chief for uh, episode uh, three. I believe on the tail end of episode three, we also got a uh, we had the the lesbian uh, spot. The yeah, lesbians, we, we, they they showed her ass as well. Yeah, we got hers while she did. She, had, she did have a a fairly nice <laughs> ass. So, I mean, at least somebody got something out of it. I mean, she yeah. did have a nice ass. I mean, Chief probably would have had a nice ass if he knew how to wash. <laughs> but that was one dirty motherfucker. Like, that yeah. was a grimy booty hole. Uh, Adam Warford, thanks for the super chats. It's too bad they couldn't get the actor from Forward on the Dawn. That actor was taller than what they have in the series. And Cosplayers is better uh, at bringing the being the character. And Johnson isn't in the show. Yeah, Johnson not being in the show was something that was really pissing us off especially when the writer's room was all about, you know, diversity and inclusivity and everything. And once again, they take one of the minority characters from the canon and they just don't include them and just race swap somebody else. Well, it's because they can't have that toxic masculinity. Like we said, when we were talking about episode one, these and guys are having Johnson is <clears throat> overflowing. The man has testosterone to the point where they literally just have to scrape it off his skin and it's enough to make a fucking Spartan. 
Dude, you you yeah. literally take the sweat from Sergeant Johnson's balls, and you have enough testosterone to make a second Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. So, um, do do we want to go into like an episode by episode breakdown of what happened, or do we just kind of want to do an overall? It, it might be right easier there. if we do. Uh, I mean, it it might be easier. It might not be easier. I don't know. I mean, let, episode two because they they all kind of blurred together because there's just <laughs> nothing about any of these episodes well, so that I, really I, sticks I, out. I personally have more of an issue with three than any of the other episodes, but two really puts it up there as far as what I really despise about their writing team. Um, to put it into perspective, uh, episode one at the tail end, we, we left when Chief got the MacGuffin and it shut off all power to reach, which apparently a fucking device like that can do it. Um, and then he fucks off to a pretty much pirate... Uh, Space pirate hole. The, the 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 oh my god, the rubble is what yeah, it's called. It's just a collection of <laughs> it's a collection of asteroids that have been mined out, and people live in these asteroids. Isn't that one of the ones that in a shit hole? Isn't that te- if, if I remember correctly, they used that same plot line in the Fall of Reach book when the Spartans go on yeah. their first mission. Yeah, and it was destroyed shortly after. That yet it's still around in the TV show and Madrigal like the other the thing one of the things that they really aren't doing very well in this show is the chrono uh, you know the chronology and everything uh but real quick though I am wrong thanks for super chat says so naked chief is true man this show is trash yes it is I, and I would not be surprised if we saw more cheeks before the end of episode fucking nine I can't. Wow, wow, I, wow. I, this 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 show actually managed to take a naked woman with a nice ass and make me roll my eyes and groan when it came on the screen. Uh, Here, it's because we we immediately knew it was following afterwards. I yeah. already have a prediction for this, which is going to be the funniest thing ever. You're going to see Chief get laid in this show, and it's going to be funny. No, no, we're probably not going to see Chief getting laid. They're building up somebody else for that. They're, they're building up a lot of people. I, I will say, episode two had one redeeming factor, and unfortunately it blew its load freaking like maybe a fifth of the way through it. And it was the fact that when he gets to the asteroid belt uh, city, all these people see Master Chief come off. They're all very aware that he's a Spartan, so they're all training guns on him. Yeah, and they're, they're all thinking they stand a fucking chance, which is like, bros, really? One person one person brings a forklift out, sets it in front of his path, turns off the engine, is like, yeah, cool, this is going to stop him. He proceeds to put down the artifact and literally physically push it back and then push on as if nothing fucking happened. That was the one good thing about episode two. And then you got weird philosophical bitching and more retconning. Oh, yeah. Uh, it pretty much culminated with the end of episode two being, oh, by the way, there was someone that the Covenant captured. Somehow yeah, the like Covenant either... abducted somebody, gave them an anal probe, and then just let them loose. Either just... let them loose or he somehow Die. escaped as, as a crazy man. Well, no, he said straight up they just let him go. Like, why the fuck would the Covenant show mercy? Yeah, that doesn't really make any sense. They're like literally human trying beings to genocide. Infestation. Yeah, they're like, literally trying to genocide the entire human race because the prophets know, this is the whole reason, the prophets know the truth, that the humans are the fucking, uh, the reclaimers, and that Forerunner tech will basically only work for humans, and the prophets want to cover that, that shit up. And so that's why they want the humans fucking dead and gone. They're not going to just let them go. And they're certainly not going to tell the entire fucking covenant this fucking secret. Because it appears to be pretty common knowledge considering the fact that they have a human sitting there with all the leaders of the covenant. And this bitch is taking order. This bitch is giving orders to elites and hunters and jackals and grunts. and all that. By the way, we're four episodes in and we still haven't seen a jackal or a grunt. Yeah. It is, really? it is exclusively, yeah, exclusively elites for the first episode. We see yeah. the one elite from episode one that actually watched Chief handle the artifact. Granted, wouldn't have been able to see the vision that Chief had because not even the Spartan next to him did. Apparently, he knew what he saw, went back to the Covenant, and instead of talking to the freaking high charity leaders that are right there, he's talking to the Earth chick about, oh yeah, by the way, uh, we saw a ring. We know this is somehow connected to the power, but we don't have the artifact because he got away with it. 
And then she has the ability to pretty much talk back to everybody on the high council, as well as give orders to the elites. I'm, I'm sorry, but no, not in the slightest. It's, it's, it's a complete misunderstanding of the halo lore. A, a, on the simplest levels it's it's just bad but then you know you have this f- fantasy self-insertion studio mandated original character Quan ha who is oh, this God. is the weird part i hate this character so much and first off it, it's like they don't know whether or not they want this chick to have a shaved head or dreadlocks so they just gave her both and it looks completely fucking ridiculous it looks like somebody just literally took a shit on top of her head and it just started growing. Right? That I do remember from the first episode was the weird hairdos. They're trying to go with like a Mad Max tribal thing, but it's not working out mm-hmm. very well. And she's an insurrectionist, right? Now, in the Halo lore, the insurrectionists are horrible, horrible, horrible people. Okay. We're talking, these are the people who come in and start shooting civilians for no fucking reason. They, they have no problem assassinating political leaders, right? They will take your town hostage. Anybody who resists them gets locked in internment camps. And then when the insurrectionists move on, they typically just leave their prisoners in their cells to rot and die, right? That is what insurrectionists do in the Halo universe. They're monsters, Yet this show is painting them as the misunderstood resistance to the Nazi regime that is the UNSC. Uh, yeah, because I was gonna every say every episode keeps pummeling more and more Nazi imagery into the <laughs> UNSC. And when I went into this, I thought, okay, we're gonna see some kind of Nazi shit somewhere, but where is it gonna be? And they picked the fucking good guys to do it. Now, the UNSC has done some fucked up shit, but it was mostly ONI, okay? The UNSC and the UEG actually have no fucking clue about some of the shit that you know is going on with ONI. They had no idea about the Spartan program or that the Spartan 2s were kidnapped or any of this shit. It was, there was a whole audio drama about the fact that, okay, we're trying to blow the whistle on the horrors of the Spartan program. And so O and I are the monsters, okay, out of the UNSC. But this show has straight up a UNSC backed governor on an outer colony who wears a Nazi esque trench coat and goes around executing people in the middle of the streets. And the UNSC are the ones who appointed this guy. Yeah. No, fuck off. That is not what happens in this fucking in, in, in the fucking war. Okay. The UNSC. We're the fucking good guys. Oni did horrible things. Yes, we know. They're a separate fucking entity. The insurrectionists were terrible people. They weren't misunderstood fucking freedom fighters. The you the insurrectionists, for fuck's sake, literally bought up old covenant warships so they could glass UNSC colonies. Does that sound like misunderstood freedom fighters to you? I will say one thing that is absolutely irritating about this show, just just as a moderate Halo fan, they use far too many normal weapons in this. We saw... Oh, yeah, the (laughs) AK-47s? Vectors, AK-47s. One of the UNSC uh, frigate captains was using a... uh, Fucking Admiral had a goddamn SIG P320. Yeah, Sig P320. And I'm just like, dude, there's there's all these things that are like 21st century weapons, and Halo's in, in fucking a far more advanced time. Like, I get it. The 2550s. Some, tw- some of these weapons are probably still really fucking good to use. Yeah, and no, I that was one no. thing I said in the first episode that I gave the show credit. It said, yes, this is true to lore. You would see insurrectionists using old weapons because they wouldn't be tracked. They were technically contraband. And, you know, there was a whole thing about it in the lore that a lot of these weapons were still in use. But to this extent, no. And I, it, it, it's like they, they inflated this budget massively by getting all these other things. When they could have just skipped buying the Chris Vectors and the AKs and the fucking, um, you know, the SIGs and all that shit. And just gave people the fucking UNSC props. This, for fuck the, 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 some the, of the people, the who, the, the people the who were using you, Chris Vectors were UNSC people. That's true. The, the thing that really kind of got me, even though I only did watch the first episode, was 
I knew what the budget for this show was going in. It was supposed to be $10 million an episode. This is a $90 million television show, which is pretty much in terms of budgets for TV shows other than fucking Lord <clears throat> of the Rings. It's pretty much up there as an A-list budget. Um, and you're telling me that you have production mistakes like this in a show like this that has basically a bunch of fucking no-name actors they probably didn't have to pay that much. Yeah. And I, I feel like more money went into this just to buy the name Halo than it did actually into the production. Like somehow they, they factored in the, the fact that they had to get the rights. That or it's from... money laundering. Huh? Uh, hey, yeah, no. Quick. Yeah. Did you see uh, Eon's uh, super chat by any chance? Uh, yes, I did. I was waiting for a break in the uh, chat, but let me go ahead and hit that real quick. Eon233, thanks for super chat, says the Last of Us show is doing the same thing as this show. Yeah, Pablo, uh, Pedro Pascal came out and said that he specifically was not playing the video games because he didn't want his version of the character to be too much like the video game version. No, no, no. And that's he, the exact uh, opposite that you want to hear. I think his exact quote was something along the uh, the lines of, I don't want to imitate the original character or something along those lines. Yeah. He didn't want his uh, he didn't want his performance to be just uh, an imitation. Um, when, is it, when is that show supposed to be coming out, by the way? It's supposed to be sometime later this year, I thought. Like in no, October. And Jim, or November, Jim uh, was supposed to be in here with us, but he uh, apparently ain't feeling yeah. great. So hope you feel better soon, Cham. Uh, Cham great. says, don't forget that the Chris Vectors didn't even have magazines in them. Like they couldn't even be asked to put magazines in the fucking props. Yeah. And um, Zero Omega is correct. He says, the booty was like a 75-year-old man's and it was covered in liver spots and crap. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, so pretty much going along the 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 setup for Halo, as far as my opinion of the show, in four and a half hours of runtime, it or not sorry, uh three and a half hours of runtime with it, not counting the, the credits or any of that stuff. This show has probably moved a plot as fast as you know, maybe one maybe one and a half anime episodes in comparison that they have so many ongoing separate plots and none of them are good. Not like, wrong. They, they said they spent all of episode two pretty much just showing the dude that the UNSC put into charge, just, you know, executing people like what was saying earlier, we were pretty much watching the, the chick that uh, chief saved get pushed onto, um, uh, oh god, brain's gonna freaking fart on this one. Uh, the guy that's in charge of the uh, the colony. Oh, the Vincher. Uh, yeah, my, he my he Piera? leaves. Uh, he he leaves. Uh, he leaves her uh, in his charge while he goes back to uh, Reach to pretty much just. Oh no, you're thinking of Soren. Yeah, the chief. Uh, the yeah. chief. So l let me explain it all. So there's a, a rogue Spartan named Soren. Okay, and this is part of the lore. So what had happened in the canon lore? is that Soren uh, didn't react very well to the augmentation procedures, and he became basically a Hulk version of a Spartan, right? The dude was so big that he couldn't shoot the guns, and they didn't have armor and uniforms big enough for him to wear, okay? And his hands became, like, these atrophied, fucked up, like, fused messes that were more like claws than hands. And so the UNSC was like, okay, bro, we don't, we can't even, we can't even find underwear, underwear that fit you. Uh, and your hands are fucked up and you're in constant pain. And we have to keep giving you painkillers so that you don't feel like you want to kill yourself. We're going to put you behind a desk and we're going to fix you. And then we're going to put you on the battlefield. But Soren was left on a desk for like a couple of years and he saw no chance of anything getting fixed. And, so then he got the idea of, you know, this insurrectionist who was inside the UNSC started filling Soren's head with all kinds of, you know, you should break away from them. They don't care about you type bullshit. And then Soren um, defects, right? And he, he runs away from the UNSC. So another Spartan, and I believe it was Randall, who is the decommissioned Spartan that you see in Halo Nightfall. I believe it was the same my character. I believe that was him. Um, Randall helps him escape. Uh, they shoot down Soren's Pelican as he's trying to flee. They, and they don't even look for him, okay? Because Halsey says to Chief Mendez, 
look, this guy was raised in the woods. If he doesn't want us to find him, we're not going to find him. We didn't find a body, but it's just not worth our time. If he's still alive, just let him go, right? In the show, he becomes his fucking space pirate, and Chief is the one who helps him run away, which is not in character for the Master Chief, right? Um, and so the Chief leaves Quan uh, Fa. I think you got a bot in the chat right no, now. No, it's uh, we're good. Uh, Omega's taking care of it. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so Chief leaves Quan Ha, the fantasy insert Asian character space. with her, yeah. uh, with him, and they go on a feels trip. And then the rogue Spartan is like, Chief, you got to pull them, you got to pull the Deus Ex Machina pellet out of your back because right above, like right where the, the hit, they had apparently implanted this pellet inside all the Spartans that turns their emotions off, which isn't yeah. in the fucking war. And it makes it so that, like, you can't hear music, you can't hear certain sounds, which I'm like, okay, that seems like that's a, a hindrance on a battlefield. Um, and that, like, you can't taste anything, and you have no emotion, you have no personality. And then the chief is like, I'm just going to take the chip out for, like, no reason. And so then he strips down in front of a mirror, and Cortana's, like, guiding his hand on where to put the knife to take this thing out. And Chief then pops it out, and that's when we see Chief's bloody butt. And no. then he, you know, just throws the pellet away. And Halsey's like, "No, let him do it. This is fine. <laughs> this this, this killing <laughs> machine that I have been put in charge of, and that is, you know, I'm supposed to make sure he doesn't do shit that's unexpected. Yeah, no, just, just let him go rogue and start taking himself apart. Makes no sense. All right. So here, here's my here's my question too, knowing some of the lore. When Master Chief gets buck ass naked, does he have implantation scars uh, on his back? Very, very few. Uh, uh, yeah, um, very few, and it's about his back location, like upper back, upper uh, back, and upper torso. So and the other, they, yeah, isn't uh, it, it, uh, nor, the 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 ones they were supposed to have was kind of like the ones that Wolverine got, except they didn't actually heal yeah, in terms of like a layout all over your body because they gave him. Yeah. They gave Spartans a similar thing to Wolverine's adamantium skeleton. They had like um some kind of ceramic composite lacing over their bones that made them basically indestructible, right? So Spartans weren't getting their bones. Until the brutes came into the fucking field, Spartans weren't getting their fucking bones broken and shit, right? Yeah, but like, then they made those hammers. Yeah, then those hammers came into the equation, and you started seeing people get their fucking chest cavities caved in. Um, So, or like... Having soldiers smush like fucking little tiny fucking like marshmallows. Yeah, like there was a, a scene in Halo First Strike, one of the novels, where yep. a Spartan takes the gravity hammer to the fucking chest, and it's just like there was a chest, now there's limbs. <laughs> so you don't fuck with a gravity hammer, but you know, this 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 show is was that first strike? That was first strike, yeah. Because the brutes, what sport Spartan was the one that got exploded? I can't remember, but uh, the name. I thought it I, was a. Uh, I think it was a. I remember it was a female. Well, there was there I was Linda. Think her name was her name was Grace. You know, I think or I I think her name was Grace because after she's killed by the brute, the chief takes her armor and triggers the nuclear the miniature nuclear reactor in her armor to use it as a bomb to fuck up the ship that they're on. Uh, so I believe her name was Grace. Mm. But episode three. Episode three is when they introduced the rape. Oh, she didn't uh, She didn't get the gravity hammer. That was not her. She did die, but she did not get the gravity hammer. It was three brute shots to the stomach. Oh, okay. Okay, three brute shots. Um. Uh... So, Mike, do you think we're being honest or truthful when we say we, we have a rapey doctor in Halo? Uh, Given the way that they're trying to portray the UNSC in this as Nazis, it would not shock me if they did have a rapist. I think that's true. Cortana almost got raped in this show. The computer program. Before yes. she was made a computer program, yes. So oh, you're set, talking about because up, they're using a real person's consciousness so, so they yeah. can't so fucking up, in there. To set up episode three, 
um, she finds out that he has that the pellet that's supposed to suppress all of his emotions. Um, and about the time that he's going to try to take this out, they're going through with the Cortana clone being brain scanned and turned into a uh, living AI. Okay. The thing is, when they have her on the table after doing all the tests to make sure that the, the clone is perfectly suitable for it, the guy that is her assistant is telling her, you have a beautiful brain as he is stroking her before the operation. This man somehow was able to convey how to be a fucking creepo perfectly within just five minutes. And within the time of that, they go through the whole brain scan. They turn her uh, brain into Cortana and then ship it into Chief. And then we proceed to get the whole pellet removal with her assistance. And then Chief decides he's going to tour the town. Let's let, let's let's stop and, and just consider how fucked up this is. Now, now, not just from a lore standpoint, but from just like a general perspective standpoint, is you have somebody who's very rapey, who's taking a female brain, doing horrible things with it, and then putting it into the body of a man, and you're expecting that thing to keep that man alive. <laughs> like what's what's really fucking weird about the whole segment, right? Is is first off, Colton is entirely correct when he says that they they ripped off the scene in terminator 2 you know the scene where um sarah connor is in the uh you know the mental facility and yeah. she's lying on the bed because they just gave her a tranquilizer and the guy comes over and just like licks her face yeah. the dude is literally this is the it's the clone of dr halsey that is to become cortana right oh, God. it's the same consciousness and everything and they give her this injection so that she can't move. And the doctor l goes to lean in to kiss her and, you know, maybe do more right when the door opens. I'm just like, okay. Uh, that's just, that's just skeezy. That's some, that's doesn't belong in Halo. Louis C.K. Yeah. was in Halo. No, he was not because it wasn't <laughs> just some random guy jizzing all over people. <clears throat> Please tell me that doesn't exist in there. We don't know yet. We still haven't seen the full episode nine setup that they got. We could have we could have some weird thing that because Chief has the pellet out, he looks over Halsey and just you know busts one out Evangelion style. I can see it. Uh, Jordy Jordan, thanks for the super chat. Says Halo is a good show. Stop smoking. No and no. <laughs> Definitely like, not going to stop smoking if I have to watch more of this shit. In, in fact, as in, in counter to that, I am going to go ahead and I am going to take a hit from the weed pin. I, I'm yeah, so, honest, so far, nothing that you're telling me is all that surprising. Like I said, the, the like I knew going into this that it was probably going to be fucking god awful and terrible. I knew that they we're going to change a bunch of stuff because like, we all knew it because they said it out in the public. <laughs> going, to do an, going to do an alternate timeline. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so yeah. that, that was, I was expecting, I was going into it expecting a bad story. What I was hoping for was maybe that we had, you know, good production value, at least something that was interesting. Maybe they had some good effects. Maybe they had some good practical effects oh, and props. No. And oh, no, they're, like they're terrible. They're work. fucking terrible. That, that's what I was hoping, especially given the budget. But then when you go in, that's the offensive part to me. It's not It's not that it's the story is trash. It's that it's poorly made trash. Oh, no, it is. That's the, the part, the that's the part that, that annoys me the most. Like, if, the, if it's good, if a show is good, if a movie is good, I will forgive low production value right and here's a great example okay there were a lot of moments where the you know in halo forward on the dawn that you know would if if the movie was bad i would have gone all in on the firearm and accuracies right like mm -hmm. every time chief fires the magnum in forward on the dawn the slide doesn't move back and that is something that generally would annoy me if it was a bad show, but because it's good, I'm like, you know, I'll just, I'll let it, I'll let it fly. It's, it's a nitpick. I'll let it, I'll let it go. Right. But in here, no, 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 no. I'm going to nitpick the shit out of this thing. Well, again, there's so many inaccuracies, uh, inaccuracies that we can just take off of a, you know, moderate halo thing and just put it into a, an overall thing. There's so many people in this series that know about a Spartan program that's that's going on, even though they shouldn't. Yeah, the Spartan program is common fucking knowledge, which at some point it was, but we weren't able to nail down 
when in the lore it became common knowledge. We were able to get a, a series of years down when the Spartan program was eventually leaked to the public. Not I think only... it was I think it was a six year window that we had narrowed it down to. Yeah, not, not I, I can't did... remember the dates that we did, though. We, we did a whole deep dive into it. So yeah. not only not only is the public knowledge of, of Spartans a big ordeal, almost everybody in here knows about the halos, that they're very important things outside of the covenant, because the covenants are the only ones that made a damn religion regarding the, uh, the, the halo rings. Yeah. Not only that, you also have the part about um, uh, you have the thing about uh, chief being known as the demon throughout the Arbors, even though he wasn't yeah. known as that until he destroyed the first ring. Yeah, that was literally because in that process of the Battle of Halo, the first Battle of Halo, Master Chief killed like an entire fucking armada before he blew up the goddamn ring. And that was when they started calling him the demon. But here they're just calling him the demon before he did the stuff that made them call him the demon. Which is... He's also stupid. not... He's also not wearing the well. I mean, if we're gonna go into the inaccuracies and stuff, he's not wearing a Mark V suit. He's no, yeah, Mark because suit. he's supposed to be wearing a Mark V at this point in time. Yeah, he doesn't start wearing the Mark VI until Halo Two. And it's yeah. not even something that we can that someone can like call us out and be like, "Oh, you guys just don't know that." It just you you don't know that at all. No, he personally says it in the first episode. He says the exact Mark line VI, is, "This is Mark VI, Mark VI Mjolnir, Mjolnir armor." armor. I, it, and, and, it honestly would have been funnier if he said Mark V because then it would be like, you people are fucking stupid. Because <laughs> when, when we first saw the trailer, me and Mike talked for a good long bit about, because uh, I said the, time the armor yeah. doesn't look right. And we, you were trying to figure out the timeline. And I'm like, no, dude, the timeline is it's before Halo 1. It's a prequel. Mm -hmm. So he should be wearing the Mark V from Halo yeah. 1. Yes. Or he should be wearing, the, you know, if it's even more before, he should be wearing the Mark IV. Because the Mark IV was the first version given out to Spartans. Then the Mark V came out, and then you had uh, you sure? the Mark VI was in Halo 2. I thought the Mark V was the base for all Spartans when they no, first got No, uh, because the they first had the Mark IV suit, which didn't have shielding technology. Otherwise, it was completely identical to the Mark V. The, the only difference between the Mark IV and the Mark V was the shielding unit and the AI housing in the helmet. Is Those oh. are the differences between the four and the five. Um, because they actually have um, a whole yeah, chapter, yeah, you, pretty much. You're, you're, you're right, you're right. They pretty also, much have a whole chapter so yeah, dedicated should, to the Fall of Reach. They should probably be wearing the Mark IVs then. No, they, no, they should be in fives, because this is right before the Fall of Reach. Oh, okay, yeah. Because this, this right. takes place in 2552... I believe Reach falls in 2552. And yes, it does. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, the series ends in 2553. And then the prologue at the end of Halo Halo 3, I believe, is 2554. Um, and then Halo 5, I think, takes Halo 4 was three years later. Uh, so it's 2556 or 2557, and then Halo 5 is immediately after that, so we're still in 2556, I think is where the canon is at right now. So it, We might be into 2557, I'm not sure about the timeline, but timeline shit aside, this show sucks. Well, I was going to say one last thing before I've moved on to the, the, the world inaccuracy thing, uh, was Chief not absolutely bodying the uh, diversity hire chick on episode one. And completely going against orders. Me, you, and Chan were talking about this on episode one. There was not a single time the Spartans would have, in early days like this, been like, oh yeah, by the way, especially Chief, I'm just going to completely ignore this order to kill a, a person that, you know, I brought on board the ship. Who was part of the colony that got attacked. <clears throat> you could also throw in the fact that most of the times, I don't think the UNC, UNSC would just literally tell him to go execute a prisoner. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, hey, shoot her in the head and launch her out the airlock. Fuck it. And then they turn the oxygen off in the ship, and they think that'll do a goddamn thing. Yeah. Clearly, it fucking didn't. Yeah. But we haven't even we haven't even fucking we've barely scratched the surface on episode four at this point. Because in episode four is when the other Spartan chick named Kai, which by the way. Their silver team is the new blue team. The Spartans in the show are called Silver Team, and yeah, it's, I, I, uh, that's Vanek, another one. 
that's another one I don't know why they bothered changing that. Like you had that available to you, you didn't need. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is the reasoning is because they have wanted nothing to do with the original lore outside of picking and choosing a few characters and some aesthetics that they didn't really care about the, the they, they would have just wrecked the Spartan personalities of the people they did pick anyway. The fun it, it's it's I'll get to it after the super chat, but there's something very amusing about the about the blue team retcon. Uh, Absalom Hellgate, thanks for super chat. Says here's some painkillers for your Halo related suffering. Sweet. Um, a Halo Four story started on twenty five fifty seven. Thank you very much. But, oh right, yeah, because it was four years. Why was I thinking it was three years? He was on the forward on the dawn. Yeah, it was four years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, that line. Um, I was right slash wrong. Um, okay, so the the blue team retcon. Oh, Ian Carls, thanks for super chat. Says the guy who played Amos in the Expanse would have been a better choice for Master Chief, in my opinion. I haven't seen the Expanse, but it is one of those things that's on my need to watch it list. Um, so here's what's um, the weird thing about the blue team retcon right and dr doom thanks for super chat has anybody beat elden ring yet um mike and mako i think have i haven't beaten it yet because i, I, I took haven't. a break because it was actually ruining my life with me being up till three in the morning however uh, i will be dip dipping back into it on the weekends to try to finish yeah it. and i'm waiting to do some, have... i'm waiting to do some pc upgrades before i get into it because i don't want to have a subpar experience i did, uh, I, uh, I, I've played it i've hit, played it but i haven't beaten it um so the blue team retcon right so blue team, for those of you who know, uh, or for those of you who don't know, consists of Chief, Fred, Linda, Kelly, and originally Sam. Sam died shortly after. It was actually their first mission where they got the Mark IV armor. Yep. Uh, they went onto a Covenant ship, and Sam got shot in the side, I believe. Like, uh, like yeah, right he, caught, he caught a plasma stuff. pistol to the side. This is also <clears throat> before any of those suits had any kind of shielding. Yeah, and it tore, it breached the um, the undersuit of his armor, so his suit was no longer, uh, you know, vacuum capable. And so he stayed on the ship. He triggered the fucking nuke, and the rest of the blue team was able to escape. Scarfy the Strange, thanks for Super Chat, says... How ironic is it that Red versus Blue had the better Halo show with a better uh, corrupt super soldier program and better resistance story arc? Again, the fans always do it better. But um, <coughs> so that's who Blue Team is, right? They're Chief's team. Yeah. And that's, the, that's the team that he started with. Yeah. It's one, it's two dudes, two chicks. And in the show, it's two dudes, Chief, Vanek, um, Kai and a chick who has had maybe two lines of dialogue throughout the entire show, and I can't remember her name. Started uh, with both, an R. <laughs> both of said lines were probably in episode, I think, four when they were one doing and four. The, uh, the they, had like, one, they had like two lines in four and one line in she, one. I don't even think she had a line in one. No, she said, like, I'm taking Overwatch or some shit like that. It oh, was, yeah, because like, she was the sniper one in episode one. Right. No, right, no, right. no, no. No, Kai was the sniper, but we're, we're getting we're getting off off point, but. They did as far like the team isn't more diverse. They didn't really do anything. Like okay, they added a black. They 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 made the would be Fred character black. That's like about all they did. Everything else, it's the fucking same. But the chick who's supposed to be Linda, who strangely enough looks more like Kelly, okay, because Linda was uh like red hair, freckles, pale skin, and the freckled chick in the Spartan team in this one is not the sniper, but either way I am, I know way too much shit about halo, but either way, uh, you know, the Kai, the sniper chick, right? So she rips her own pellet out after she sees chief rip out his pellet. And then she takes, while she's got her gun stripped down, she takes like some kind of, Gun, gun cleaning, cleaning material. Yep, gun, gun cleaning. That is it clean. looks. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's some kind of a degreaser, and she just dyes her hair pink in the worst and paper. laziest possible way. It's it's not even like she goes, you know, does a full wash or that. She literally just takes clumps of it, drips it in like a strand, a fistful of hair, and then streaks it back, and it looks like someone smeared pink shit all over her hair. 
Which, if they, like, here's the thing about that scene, okay? So the scene is fucking cringe, but I get what their point is. It's like, okay, this is a personality. They're trying to change something about themselves um, because they're exploring having ideas and they're not experienced with these things. So they did something stupid. And they even admit they did something stupid. Like, it looks like shit, doesn't it? It's an exact right. line. Like, I, my hair looks like shit. Um, and I, so I understand what they were trying to do, but it's like, you took degreaser. Okay, that shit will strip your fucking skin off of your goddamn hands, and you're putting it in your hair. Yeah, the, well, so, like those no, you're you're learn. getting cancer and you're losing your hair is what's going to happen. So one of the things that you you and I were talking about yesterday while we were watching it is while Chief was taking a tour around town without his uh, pellet in to you know strip him of his emotions. They couldn't even give him a better angle to make him seem slightly larger than everybody. They have him going on an yeah, escalator he's, ride, and he looks, he looks about the same or smaller than most of the humans around him. I'm like, you could have at least gotten some, you know, random filler people that were under five foot to make it at least seem like he was bigger. Maybe do some catering. They couldn't even fucking did, do that much. Did they have him do a Saturday Night Fever strut down the sidewalk? I need to know that. No, it was no. uh it was a, I got yeah. a shit in my pants and uh, I need to walk down these stairs very very uncomfortably. Ah, oh, what's that smell? But again, even in and out of the armor, the dude just does not he does not act and walk properly. No, he, he, like he, he does look like he's got a, a a a fucking plug in his ass. I mean, that suit can't be easy to walk in. Either that or the, some of the costumes they've given him. Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is? Hmm. All I see is a, a, I, I rebooted the YouTube app. And for a second there, I thought I got an ad for the Halo TV show. But no, it was a <laughs> fucking investor thing. But, um, you know, so yeah, the to the gun degreaser chick with that scene, Kai, like, it, it's fucking cringe. And she'd be giving herself cancer and the fucking hair would fall out, right? But then she starts like kind of uh, Adam Warford saying it was gun grease, which it could be grease. But if it was, it would be black. I've never seen, Pink, uh, you know, that kind of grease with that kind of color. Um, at least the, the, the grease I use when I'm assembling rifles is black, not pink, which is why I was thinking it was some kind of like maybe Loctite or a degreaser because i have seen those chemicals with that with that shade um so that's why i think it's a degreaser and why i don't think it's just uh you know like a grease no clp is yellow so it's not clp mm. but clp will strip your fucking skin off don't let that shit sit on your hands wash that shit off if it gets on there um but so when she finally takes the chip out right and I'm I'm high, by the way. We're all high. We have to be to talk about this fucking thing. So that's why we're all over the place. We, <laughs> yeah, no. I, I I had a couple of hits before starting the stream. I took another one, and I'm also I've got a couple of beers as well. So that's why we're we're bouncing. But so, um, pink hair chick, pink hair chick, Kai. She starts flirting, like kind of flirting with Miranda Keys. It 100. percent And they. Feels they, like it. It, it does. Yeah, it does. It really does. You gotta have that lesbo moment in there for no fucking reason. But the funny part is, is the lesbo connection all, will they fuck, won't they fuck scene comes like t five minutes after the Spartans tell Miranda Keys, yeah, your mother gave us pets and forced us to murder all murder our pets. That doesn't get you hot. Mm, that doesn't like, make your box wet. <laughs> there's there, like there's oh, a God. weird like there was a weird amount of ki pet killing in episode four because they they also is have a the flashback same as scene. All the children killing in episode one, <laughs> kinda because like in episode four there's this flashback segment with the master chief 
and we see him going with his dog right he's just running around playing with his dog and then you see like chief's father who's all angry and he's like bury it john you have to bury it and And he's like i don't want to bury it (laughs) bury it son mom help me please and it's framed and it looks like oh god the master chief's father made him murder and then bury his own dog and that's not what it is at all speaking uh speaking of flashbacks episode three was also when we got the entirely called for and everybody was definitely wanting this the backstory of how the human got brought into the covenant which nobody cared about which by the way also had a kind of forced kiss scene between the kids which is weird as a as a kid she's being read a story by another kid it's apparently the book that she had in episode i want to say it's two that was the human story thing that had that going on. And of course, to play into the everybody, uh, all the, the humans are Nazis and they're evil. Uh, they're on a junk planet and they're not working. They're instead reading the story. Well, when they're yeah. found by the guards, one of the guards beats the, just, the, the, yeah, the they child. They beating the shit out of kids for no reason. Well, no, no. The one of them beats a child to death. It was the one that was reading the story to her. And the other one is shocking the, the chick and is about ready to try to kill her when a covenant ship drops off two people with a glowy crystal that they eventually scare off the people. They go up to the chick and are like, she's the one we want. And so they kidnap her and bring her on the ship. But it's and supposed elite- to be set up as a, as a savior moment by the elites from the atrocious Nazi like humans. Like the weird part is, is like the elite, like the thing that really weirded me out about that scene where the covenant abduct her is like the elite does like this really gentle oh it's cute look like he's gonna be nice to it and he, he he's okay with it he doesn't mind what why am i seeing a cuddly elite uh, that, that, that the last word i would i would picture to describe an elite is cuddly look i can say for certain okay i can say as a fact there is a lot of hentai out there about the elites. Okay. Okay. I'm aware of that. That still doesn't I, make it seem like a cuddly I, looking thing. There game. is very, very little cuddly fan art of elites, right? It, it's they, they, this show. This show. Also, no. um, and its I, face I know looks we like were, Zoidberg. I know we were talking about it earlier uh, before the stream. Um, the, episode three also had probably the, one of the most blatant ripoffs from a video game I've ever seen, which is a borderline ripoff of, I believe, Dead Space 2 when you're having the, the whole... Oh, yeah, the, the eyeball uh, scene from Dead Space 2 that they yeah. stole and put in here. Yeah, what? They, they did that. Yeah, they so pretty much what happens is when they're going to do the brain scan, they pretty much pull out a thing that like, opens up the brain up scan the to create eye. Cortana specifically. Yeah. Uh, they open up the left eye and a needle gets plunged down into the eye and they digitally take the brain and she bleeds out on the, on the table when they do it. And it's like, and then they, that... and then they dump her in a, in an acid bath and dispose yeah. of the body. Yep. Also, uh, apparently in this timeline, chief doesn't already have the equipment to interface with AI. Apparently that is one modifier that never happened to him in this entire series. Which I I can't remember the exact he, timeline for when they did. He, they had a neural link. No, actually, no wait. I I think given, I remember. He was given Cortana right before they went to Halo. Yeah, he was so I it on Reach, and it was before the fall of Reach. So I if think if I'm remembering the if I'm remembering the timeline here, when they did the initial augmentations, they included a neural link in all of the Spartans because most people in the UNSC have a neural link implant but b- shortly before they gave cortana to chief they actually pulled his old one out and put a new one in and made a modification and they basically just upgraded it right so there was an augmentation to it but in this they're just straight up giving him the augmentation right that he should have already had um so th- that's another thing they fucked up um but like it, they they just fucked the whole thing up again. They fucked everything in the fuck up. But right around that time, Chief is trying to like pick through his memories because this this forerunner artifact is awakening his memories as a child, which apparently Doctor Halsey brain you know 
did some kind of uh, chemical brainwashing to make them forget. We just got to rub your brains with some bleach. You'll be fine. Yeah. And so it's unlocking all these memories of his, right? And he <laughs> finds out that he lived like maybe five feet away from this fucking forerunner artifact that they've been looking for the entire time. And that's why they have to go back to his old house. But the thing that annoys me about the whole thing is the master chief comes from a planet called Iridanus two, right? I can't even that was, pronounce it. There were two Spartans that were born on Iridanus two. The first was the chief and the second was Emil from halo reach. They were born on, um, I think even on the same continent from the planet as well. And, Iridanus 2 was a you know a colony planet. It was fairly big, it had a lot of stuff, and the chief was specifically born in uh Elysium City. And but in the show, it is like a budding kind of terraforming experiment, and there weren't any uh civilizations, and it was all led by the Master Chief's parents, so they were apparently some like big important people or some shit. And like so the, the 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 image of the planet itself was completely wrong but they also couldn't pronounce the name properly like mako was saying they called it eradinus <laughs> and i'm like guys yeah. it it's there in the games it's there in the shows it's there in the audio drama they say well, we, the name of this planet well, we and, can and, very, and they can't we even can be very clearly tell that they didn't actually look at anything in the lore. The only thing, you know what they probably did? They probably looked at the video game covers and said, okay, we, we can work with that. Here's, here's the thing, though, right? Their writing is so bad, you can't even use the defense of, oh, they didn't watch the Halo series. That in, in episode three alone, the fact that there's not any kind of uh, notification to Oni or anybody else that, hey, by the way, we have a Spartan that we usually have complete biological readings on because of their armor. We're noticing that one of the three that are here is acting completely out of character as a Spartan, is not having any of the same, um, you know, medical readings because someone that has no emotions, doesn't get excited about anything, would have a steady heart rate or a steady set of readings that you'd have on biometrics. They don't have any of that. The scene where the, the the frigate that we were talking about the the had the um, uh, captain with the the what is it P nine uh, the P three twenty or P three twenty they send a ship out to a covenant vessel that comes out of hyperspace dead in the water they they have readings and they say oh we only detect a few life forms on board or like one life form on board and. The, the next thing they have is, oh, yeah, by the way, it's the chick that's from the Covenant, and she has a hunter there. I'm like, there's no mm -hmm. way that it would have just been one life form that they would have found. They send a, a ship over to grab the ship, Yeah, the ship was back. fully manned. The ship was fully manned, and th she only kills, I think, like, what, 20 people maybe total? 20, maybe 30 people yeah. total with yeah. the, and, the help and... of the hunters? Yeah, because she can control hunter worms for whatever apparently. reason. And apparently the, the, the fucking hunter worms that are on the pod don't show up when they yeah. when you know with they the, the when they do the life they do the scans for any life on it. Like yeah. It, they straight up just like no, it doesn't work because the plot needs it. <laughs> it's again, it's just very, very bad writing. No matter how you look at it, it's it's bad in the context of the Halo universe, even taking it out of the Halo universe and going to something that's future spaceship tech stuff. That would be something that you would know all the time, especially if you're dealing with some kind of, you know, alien species that constantly is attacking you and hunting you. You would put some kind of sensor for life on board your ships. Mm -hmm. Would make sense. And not to mention, yeah, I brought this up when we were watching it. Black uh, Black Lightning 12 says that Iridanus 2 was partially glassed in 2553. I believe it was only a partial glassing, but either way. Uh, oh, it, so since, the shit the, the, that is another that is a third planet that we see in this show that shouldn't exist because the covenant destroyed it. The other and thing, instead of the glassing, they um they did like a some weird fucking like uh, oh there was a, a an escape pod that landed on the planet and it had a virus and the virus killed everyone on the planet. I'm like what? Yeah. Well, the, uh, one other thing that I, I forgot to mention while we were talking about the whole Hunters scene, apparently the human from the Covenant side has a fingernail, like, uh, energy, energy sword, sword 
she Does has she... Death Strikes fucking Yeah, she has Death Strikes powers, but in the Halo universe. What? Yeah. Oh, she has no. she has an index finger that pretty much has a hidden energy blade. No, it it was the it was the I think it was actually the pinky. I don't think it was her pinky. It, it, um I'm gonna pre- I'm just gonna pretend that it was the pinky because then it's like a super crack nail. Super no, cocaine. It is, it is indeed it is indeed the index finger. It is the index figure. I'm, I'm gonna finger. I'm gonna just choose to remember that it was the pinky. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is it is just downright terrible the amount of just stupidity in the writing. Uh, I know this is something that Chan was hitting on yesterday. While Chief is going on the walk without the the emotion pellet, he goes and he walks by a bunch of what are supposed to be UNSC troops that are playing in a break room, pretty much. Yeah, and they are all dressed in like old bdus and camos and shit like that from the yeah, army they were, they were from like fucking back in like you know uh, um five if not seven years ago type of and they're even wearing the wrong ones because there were only marines on reach right like if i'm remembering correctly but they're wearing army bdus from circa 2008 uh, that's weird the uh, like the they literally thing- just we need military. We need shit for soldiers. Yeah, it, oh, it feels like they're co- plus store. It feels like their costume and prop department was just like, yeah, you guys can have all this stuff and just use it in the movie, and that way you don't have to buy new stuff. Like that's what it felt like. Like some of the guns felt like that. Some of the costumes felt like that. It feels like like I and I know they do. You do that on a lot of movies where they will reuse props, but. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. You can't make that work. Uh, yeah. Real, real quick, uh, Lamp Alexa. Was I was just about to get to that. Lamp Alexa. What do, the, what do the hunters look like? Well, we don't you know. See, you see the bottom right leg of one that's formed into a creature, and then the only other time you see them is when she gets off of the little savior uh, AI controlled ship that fetches her. She's like, she complies with them until the guy's ready to shake her hand. And then she's like, cool, thank you. And a bunch of worms that are, you know, the make up hunters just flood out and just start killing everybody like a giant hive mind would, like the flood would. Okay, call sign coyote is saying that, that UNSC army was stationed on reach. Okay. But the, but even then, 2008 BDUs, no, nah, no, nah, that's not gonna work. Like I get it, they don't want to waste more money on freaking making props and stuff. But my lord, dude, with a franchise like this, they need it. They really do. There was there was the, also the problem of uh, like the chief really doesn't like Cortana in the show either. Like no, he's he constantly treats- telling her, "No, sit down, shut up, turn off, leave me alone." Well, he's, he's treating it like a standard AI that you can just, you know, turn off at any point in time. And he's it's, he's not aware that she is leagues above that. It's also plugged directly into his brain. Unless you want to put one in your fucking head, you're not turning it off. Yeah. Oh, and then there's the stasis scene. Oh, yeah. So Cortana, uh, has the ability, Cortana in the show has the ability to turn off the Master Chief. Just literally armor turn lock. him off. No, more than armor lock, like to the point where she has full control over his body. If they she took the places him off. in a fucking coma and can control his body, yes, they're they're doing a she test. Can just use him as a fucking marionette puppet. That's yeah, fucking hilarious. That's, that's, they, that's how they've set it up, saying that oh, everything in the future, once the Cortana unit's done and we make duplicates of her, or we we continue the program of making Cortana clones, that's the initial end game that they want to go for at Oni and the US uh, UNSC which is literally just put an AI into every Spartan's body that will 100% take them over and make them unthinking puppets. Now, the other thing is, uh, Halsey is having a experiment done after the surgery, which is she has Chief touch the relic again, and what she does is she has Cortana take him over as it. Well, because it's not Chief taking control of Chief and it's Cortana taking control of Chief, he no longer uh, interfaces with the, the, the relic. It doesn't do anything. So their whole thing about it is, oh, because he because he's not him, it technically doesn't work, which is a hundred percent bullshit. Because we saw, I believe it was Halo, was it Halo Three, where they took uh, keys and they they forced her to to start up the ring. Yes, the brute grabbed her hand <clears throat> and uh, shoved it on the console, and yeah. it just started and, up the ring. It's just yeah. like 
you're, you're telling me that the, the game is already going to tell you, oh, yeah, by the way, you don't need to be in control. Your body just needs to be there. The show's like, no, it's your special. Which also turned around the uh, the, the space colony that they ended up doing. Of course, the, the his wife has to give a speech to the Asian of, well, Which you're she a special stole the speech. person. She stole the speech from Braveheart. Yeah, she did. <laughs> the universe would be lessened by your death or your passing or whatever the hell she said. I'm just like, yeah, and then she says, and then she says that this is the part she stole from Braveheart, which in Braveheart, you know, Mel Gibson says they may take our lives, but they may never take our freedom or some shit like that. Yeah. And in this, she says the exact same thing, but dumber because she says, they killed my planet. They killed my. They killed everyone I know and have taken everything from me. But they can never take my. But they never took my spirit from me. And as long as I live in my spirit, I have victory over them. Some of the cringiest. You know, so, so, sometimes puts... you you just need to leave a little bit of it to nuance. You don't need to like fully explain it like a fucking dictionary i don't think audiences are that retarded yet sometimes they might be but in this case i don't think that's the case like that's why the brave heart line works and it's very simple and it's very straightforward and yeah. this is not is because they were trying to dress it up even though they were just taking it from there and the other thing is like the 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 thing that finally motivates the chief to take out his emotion restricting super pill is he's going over like some records and everything and he he remembers oh we you know this Spartan died on this planet and he, he he's like I don't feel anything when I think about how this Spartan died that's not never how the chief has worked he always felt a great deal of guilt every time anybody died in a fight around him. Well, he, 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 has... took, he took every death of a Marine and a Spartan as one of his own personal failures as a commander. Well, again, you saw through the entire Halo series, anytime he was given an order to just ignore the people around him dying or to leave somebody behind, he said, fuck that. And he went back and got him. And I'll say this again. I know a lot of people like to dig on infinite because, you know, still doesn't have a co-op and everything. But in the intro scene of the 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 story, you see. Uh, how real rough... quick, I want to I want to hit on something in the chat here. Um, Battletech and Robotech and Macross. They're all. T if you're trying to figure out what the connection is between those, Google what's called the Unseen. It was a bunch of models used by Battletech slash Mech Warrior that were very similar to um, Mechs from Macross and Robotech and shit and. There was all kinds of copyright battles and blah, 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 blah. So just look up the unseen. And that's the connection between uh, Mech Warrior and anime. Um, but back to Halo. Um, there was a whole, because there, there's doubt in the chat about this. There was a whole legal battle about this. And they on, you're only now able to get these models because they're being done by like third party companies and shit. But the comics, uh, the companies themselves that make the, the, the Battletech shit, like, they can't ever reference them anymore as a result of the lawsuit. Um, but, it, yeah, back to Halo. So, I mean, th they got the Chief entirely wrong. They got Cortana entirely wrong. Uh, Halsey is, again, acting like about a whip 50, bit. 50. About 50-50. She has times that she looks like the original and acts like the original. And then there's other times that she doesn't in the slightest. Yeah, and Perengoski finally like remember when we were complaining about the first episode and we're like, okay, why is this bitch just coming over and telling Halsey what to do and why is Halsey actually listening? You know, that's supposed to be Perengoski, but they, they they don't say her name in the first fucking episode. Um They didn't say they, her name until the third episode, I thought. I, I think so, yeah, because I, I remember when they said her name, I'm like, oh shit, that's who that is? It was, it was in a meeting room with other UNSC people. Halsey like stood up and pretty much threw her under the bus by saying, oh yeah, by the way, we're moving ahead with the cloning project to make Cortana, or the Cortana project with clones. Yeah. And he completely threw her under the bus so that she would, you know, take the brunt of the hit for her doing it. And at the end, we finally got the name of it, and I'm like... So this person's supposed to be leading Oni and, and Wep was telling me the whole story about it. And I'm like, yeah, no, doesn't, doesn't seem like it at all. It, yeah. She's, she's supposed to be the fucking head of ONI and she hates the shit out of Dr. Halsey, but here she's kind of, you know, I don't know. The, the relationship is all fucking weird because 
Halsey <laughs> is basically Perengoski is basically there is a line in the lore that says the only person who ever told there's only one person who ever told Perengoski no and lived. Okay. And Perengoski, you know, that was Halsey pretty much, right? She was the only person who could control Perengoski. And Perengoski kind of didn't really like even talking to Halsey. She tried to never talk to her. She, you know, was a manipulator. She wasn't a threat type person. Okay. So Perengoski is only started acting like Perengoski in episode four when she goes up to Miranda Keys, who is again, they, she's a scientist in this show and not the absolute badass that she is in the games. But she, Perengoski goes up to Miranda Keys and is like, Yeah, I want you to, you know, study this artifact alongside Halsey because I want to try and find ways to be less reliant on Halsey. Oh, no, no, mother, mother, daughter she, bonding time. Uh, she wanted her to do it uh, under the radar yeah, so that she wouldn't secretly. have to. Yeah. So she wouldn't have to worry about her info getting brought to Halsey or anything like that. And so that she could stop relying on her so much. Yeah. The funny thing is, is they, they, they race swap Perengoski and call, uh, call sign is bringing this up, but they did it. They, they, they were almost accurate. Almost. <clears throat> because Perengoski, as call sign points out was white. Osman, who is a Spartan 2 who got fucked up in the augmentation process, and then O and I came in and kind of fixed her under the radar and everything. And then Perengoski takes Osman under her wing and starts, you know, tutoring her to be her replacement when Perengoski finally retires. She was Turkish, okay? And so Perengoski in the show has a uh, very dark skin we don't i don't exa know exactly what she's supposed to be um but you know she doesn't look like Perengoski at all so another swap where they were almost right but they fucked the whole thing up but um uh, the fucking romance that is inevitably going to come up i think this is probably going to be the only romance of the show is i'm calling it's going to be kai the spartan 2 and Miranda Keys. So they're they're going to change Miranda Keys' sexuality as well. So we're going to see some scissoring action? Look, I'm just saying, both of the girl, both both the actress who plays Kai and the actress who plays Miranda Keys are both pretty hot. So if there has to be any sex scene in this show, if it's going to be those two, that's the best option. And if they want to go ahead and go full-on hardcore, you know, 45-minute long uh, turbo strap-on scene between Kai and Miranda Keys... I mean, I got to get some enjoyment. You're just giving show. the internet fat material at that point. That's all you're doing. Uh, I, the, the, the I, mean, they, I still they say already, you're going to see the Master Chief fuck someone before the end of this show. Again, they already pretty much gave everybody material with uh, the the side nude shot of the uh, Covenant chick and the ass shot of uh, Chief. That so. dirty, dirty anus. <sighs> yeah, apparently. Master, Chief, Master Cheeks has a dirty, dirty anus. Yes, he does. That is not something I wanted, you know, out of a Halo show. Yeah. Grimy no. fuck. Um, episode four probably is only funny for one aspect to me. And it's the fact that I, I get to watch the, you know, diversity hire Asian resistance leader absolutely fuck up in the hardest way possible what should be a silent return and an army buildup scene. Which scene are you she talking about? I'm talking about the entire aspect of her landing back on her home planet and dealing with all the stupidity that involves every scene on that planet. The, oh, you're the, talking about Quan. I thought you yeah, were talking Quan. about the, fucking, the diversity. High I thought you were talking about uh, Maquis. No, I, I completely got the wrong fucking thing, thing out of you. Um, no, so yeah, no, Quan Ha, the insurrectionist fantasy self insert diversity uh, studio mandate character who does absolutely nothing but whine, bitch, and moan for the first three episodes, right? She's like, we have to go back to the planet so I can fight. I'm like, lady, you are, you are shorter than Tom Cruise and scrawnier than Tom Cruise. You ain't helping fucking anyone in any goddamn fight, right? not happening but the stupidest part is there's this fucking assassin chick who's hunting kwan ha who finds and she finds out that she's being guarded by a fucking spartan and she's like yeah no i can totally take the spartan 
Like, really? Well, the, let's be I'm let's, the katana thinks she's going to take on a Spartan. Let's be real. Writing almost gave her the perfect opportunity to not even worry about him. Uh, it's 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 fucking stupid, man. Like this whole show, start to fucking finish, is one fucking dumbass thing after another. And I know it's non-canon, right? I know it's non-canon. That doesn't mean it gets a free pass fuck. and not get fucking raped up the ass by critics. It's it, they they're trying to Game of Thrones motherfucking Halo, and I'm sick and fucking tired of Game of Thrones being the one thing that dominates all this fucking New Age entertainment. It has to be dark and gritty because Game of Thrones was popular. Uh, Invader has- Cool Studios, thanks for super chats. This has been a while since I caught one of these live. I should be surprised that Hollywood is ruining my childhood yet again, but I am not. Yeah, uh, sadly. So, the thing that that I absolutely find hilarious is her as a character has spent four episodes doing absolutely nothing, and yet I would say probably a third closer to maybe five eighths of this entire show has been focused on her to the point where she, she feels like she is going to be one of the more main characters than chief in the later setup of this. Yes. I mean, what is the worst case scenario for you for this show? Like where do you think, what is the worst thing this show could do? Uh, the worst thing this show hmm. could do would be have Chief use both parts of that relic, put his ass into a coma, and then the next five episodes is us getting Diversity's little revolutionary. We're going to see Chief go completely AWOL from the UNSC and <clears throat> become a forest warrior and not care about the Covenant anymore because nobody does. And then, and then he'll just go off into the sunset like fighting something. I don't know. Probably not even the Covenant. They'll just take it completely in a direction where he'll be just like a Native American warrior for no reason. I mean, this show has done so many heretical things in in regards to Halo lore and the themes of Halo and the intention behind the stories that it's like, I honestly don't know what is left of the, the lore and the canon that hasn't been raped. At this point, I I can't think of anything. Spartans the only way I with... think this could get worse is if the Master Chief raped somebody. Like because the Chief now has all these emotions and he's free now. He can he can have he can have feelings and thoughts and a no, life. Would... If uh, the only way this show could get worse is if the Master Chief pops his first boner, has no idea what to do with it, and just rapes the closest living thing. That's no, the no. only way <laughs> this they, show no, could no, get no. worse. I'm what so horny, do. but I'm also so angry. No, no, no. What they would do is they would have him attempt to try it and have it be the savior white woman that protects them from the rape by comatosing freaking Chief. That no, is no, 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 no. I want to see the Master Chief just pick up a random grunt off the battlefield and relieve himself. <laughs> I just want to hear her going, no, no! Da- da- Daddy said that doesn't go that way! Oh, that is one thing that I will uh, that I will say that uh, was a decent part about 3. When she removes the pellet and they go to have the talk with Keys, one of the conversations that gets brought up is she grabs a needler, proceeds to explain in great detail, like a giddy child, the keys, how a needler works, and then proceeds to talk about how fun it is to absolutely blow up grunts when they're begging for mercy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hill Brig, thanks for Super Chat. He says, Sonic 2 was generic and cringe. I was disappointed. I've heard good things. It, for me, it's about a 6 or a 7 out of 10. Uh, when, when we eventually watch it and we'll do our stream on that, I'll get more into detail, but... The Sonic parts felt okay. As usual, the human parts were boring. Uh, Shiver Fluff, thanks for Super Chat. Says, brothers, get the flamer. No, the heavy flamer. Uh, I mean... I would like to toss one in the middle of the uh, development room for this uh, TV show. Burn them all out of it and get people in there that actually, you know, want to develop a decent story. Uh, Hill Brig, thanks again for Super Chat. Says, it was made for kids, not Sonic fans. I don't know. I'll, I'll... I'll see how it goes. I'll take everybody's words into consideration when I get on it. But uh, I I know absolutely nothing about the movie right now. I'm going to go see it probably here in a few days. Uh, Mostly because I don't have a movie theater right now. 
So I'm not going back until they fix their shit. Because I don't know if you guys saw or not, but last time I went to the movie theater, uh, it was under partial reconstruction. So the whole theater was filled with like smoke and wood chips. And they were down to like two lines, which were both buying tickets and concessions. And they didn't have a bathroom. They just had a bunch of toilets on the floor and the sinks didn't work. I'm not going back to my movie theater until that shit's finished. <laughs> so, fuck my theater. Mm. But, um, I mean, we don't even know where this... We know this show is going to be nine episodes long. We've got five more episodes to go in this fucking piece of shit. And there's a season two. That's already been greenlit. Yeah, already been greenlit, yep. already ready to go. It was greenlit before the first one premiered. Yep. I remember Always I was a great idea that. when you do that. Always a great idea when you do that from a financial. Well, yeah, just too. look at Batwoman, don't you know? You got to double down on the stupidity. It's it's. Uh, I still can't get over the fact though that it's been four episodes, and we haven't seen the chief do a goddamn thing other than the intro for the first episode. For a show yeah. based on like the way I describe this is it's like. It's like you had were making a show in Star Wars. Okay, this is how I explained it to a buddy of mine. It's like you're making a Star Wars show and you you don't have any of the stuff that makes it Star Wars, but you see the stuff that makes it Star Wars. Like you see Jedi walking around. It, this is the equivalent of making Grey's Anatomy Star Wars edition. That, that's what this fucking thing is because all it is is talk, 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 mm-hmm. talk about your feelings. Master Chief almost has an anxiety attack. Talk, 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 talk about feelings. Mike, do you think Master Chief having an anxiety attack is in something in the show? Yes or no? Master Chief having an anxiety attack. I'm going to say no. Well, unfortunately, I have to break it to you. There's two of them. Yep. Ow. <laughs> so the first one they do is. When he is uh, when he is taken out that pellet, he goes back to the room to place his hands back on the relic and get his uh, get get his mojo on with his memories. Um, the entire time he is doing this, as well as immediately after he stops, Cortana tells him that he has a very elevated heart rate or not heart rate. Uh, what was it? Blood sugar? No, 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 no. She she mentions heart rate, blood, uh, you know, blood, uh, some shit in his blood, blood blah blah blah. And she says he's having, you know, he's, he's he you are experiencing anxiety, Master Chief. Um, and then he has another one later on when he finds out Halsey came to visit him as a kid, which I'm like, yep. uh, I mean, you should know this, but then they, you know, changed the lore so that they were chemically brainwashed to forget everything. Uh, Invader Cool Studios, thanks for Super Chats, says, to be fair, the Sonic, to the Sonic franchise, the first wasn't groundbreaking. We were just desperate for something enjoyable at the time. I don't know. I still enjoyed it. And uh, Samurai does- Knight. Says, not going to lie, Master Chief using a grunt or jackal in the middle of the battlefield would make me check it out. He might get a new name for that. <laughs> like, it, I just don't know what this show can do to actually get worse because it's already fucked everything. Yeah, yeah no, no form of no form of canon exists in this show. Like, it, I, I get it out of universe but critiquing wise for a series that's supposed to be based on halo video game none of the characters feel the way that they should act it sound it period definitely not in the freaking props department whoever made these props are bad we even talked about this the other day uh in episode four it's all about his memories and then hunting down the second part of the relic yeah the, the cave system that is in episode four is the same cave system used in episode one that the Covenant were hiding out with the first relic. I just gotta say, though, as a point against me, how fucking autistic am I that I looked at the rocks in episode four and went, those are very familiar rocks. I've seen those rocks before. Those are the same rocks from episode one. Like, it, it, seriously, before I even saw the internals of the little rock shit, I'm like, that cliff face is a very familiar cliff face. I felt so fucking autistic in that moment. Like, that was my Chris Chan moment. But you weren't fucking wrong. No, I wasn't wrong. That's the funniest part. Because then you went and loaded the first episode, and you're like, those are the exact same rocks. Yeah, they literally have... So, in episode one, 
if we're facing the wall, just dead nuts, front, front point of view, the first episode took a shot from the right side of your point of view if you're looking at the wall, and the fourth episode did one from the left side. But the pattern that was on the wall that was there was in the very same episode one pattern on the wall that was there too. Oh, yep. so they went with the Jeff Prophet method of filming a scene. Yeah, yeah you just film it from the other side. Film from the fucking other side. Because it literally, they filmed it from the right in the first time, then they filmed it from the left. The other, it's the same fucking <laughs> that's scene. So, is set. That's so stupid. Uh, so, I understand so, filming out locations, but that's not what that means. So one of the comments uh, replying to the the Samurai Night uh, Seven Months setup was a grunt yelling, "It's the Seven Demon." Oh God! I I uh, I need to see this animated now. <laughs> we have reports that the humans appear to be violating our warriors on the battlefield. To arms, grunts! Deploy the hunters. They're unfuckable. <laughs> you say that, sir? <laughs> we were wrong. <laughs> they just said wrong. the the hunters got on the battlefield, and the marines just said they've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. <laughs> Uh, oh god I, I don't want to imagine future hentai if you got 400 years to perfect that shit that's just going to be weird you think hentai in the future is going to be fucking lit you think this they've only be got 400 years shit. I'm sure they've got some stuff hidden away from previous times they weren't ready to talk about mm. oh so, this whole fucking <laughs> I, 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 I honestly I there's a weird part where I am kind of interested to see just how badly this show can dese desecrate halo like I, well i mean that's this the is thing the is pinnacle that's the thing is you're on that train now like i got off the train at the first stop you can get off at the first stop and be okay but you guys have gone on the journey already for four episodes so you have to finish the narrative you're invested this isn't a journey mike this is not a quest well this it's kind of like this is kind of like the fucking inferno I and saying, I am your Virgil. Wouldn't you technically be Dante? <sighs> no, because I'm guiding them through this shithole. Oh, oh God. I will be your Virgil once again. Uh, I just, the thing that astounds me is how can you have. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, first off, um, Adam Warford, thanks for Super Chat, says it will get worse when they start talking and dealing with Forerunners and the ancient human star empire and Flood and the Rings, but Call Sign Coyote says, Chief gonna get that grussy. <laughs> so, I, I would say it's very bold of you to think they're even gonna go anywhere near that. I don't think they're gonna get out of this setup they've got now. They're, they're probably gonna spec the entire second season on either Chief being a, a, a pretty much tool for the, the UNSC again and going out and doing another, like, you know, sob story of freaking emotions. I need another fucking beer. <laughs> or they're going to go with a little Miss Diversity hire for the, the resistance and get an entire season of us having to listen to that, which I'm going to be honest, episode four alone makes me not want to hear her voice ever again. The fact that she rolls into her city that is currently occupied by the dude that's executing people Mind you, the same guy that was willing to throw an assassin at her after he found out she was in the city, having her go back and literally go, oh, look, that's a nice picture of me on the fucking wanted poster, pulling her freaking hat down and screaming at people in a memorial for her father when one of the generals tells her, by the way, the resistance is over. Mm -hmm. To me, that has to have so much stupidity no, involved. No, no. But it's even funnier because the instant she does take her hood off and starts screaming at everybody and calls them traitors, the fascist governor shows up and guns down all her fucking friends. Yeah. I mean, can you guys hear me? My headset just clipped again. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. She literally gets like her, two of her family members and her friends just like gunned the fuck down and has like no fucking remorse. Because she's a completely emotional freaking retard. She's there's like a no, sociopath. Like, and, like no, everyone else in this show. There's no logic to her as a character. She she is just, no, I'm getting my way or I'm going to call you the biggest like piece of shit in the world and not give a shit if you get affected by it. Um, 
Samurai Knight has a great idea. <laughs> no. And he says, thanks for the super chat. Says, if Halo turns into interspecies reviewers, Master Chief rating each Covenant species and the cheeks he takes and gets everyone trying it would scare them off. I'd watch that. I'd watch that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hillbright, yes. They uh, they confirmed a season two before episode one even launched. Like they were ready to double down yeah. on this stuff faster than Batwoman, which I, that reminds me of another comment I saw earlier. Uh, at least we're at the point now where they haven't completely 180'd hero activity and villain activity on their heads like the CW's Bat Batwoman does. Like you have you have people in that series that are heroes in quotes as they do the most villainous shit possible. That they, they, they at least haven't done that with Halo yet. <coughs> All right, so I took another hit, and I have another beer. Okay. <coughs> so now we now we need to get into that, that. So that means that means that means that now that the, 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 this chat gets to go full fucking degenerate, okay? Because now we're talking about the Master Chief just raping his way through an army okay i can still taste the weed <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. that'll happen <laughs> and our covenant reviewer from metal yep <laughs> so so are we, are we gonna gauge which one we think would probably be the best <laughs> lay out of out of the levels of covenant yeah so we have the brutes the jackals the grunts the elites and the hunters and the huragok Okay. Which so, one do you think is wait, the wait, best? Wait, wait. Which spot? one's the Huragok? Is that the engineer? Those are the engineers. So the names okay. are to actually break the names out. Yeah, the, the elites are the Sangili, the yeah. Jackals are the Kigiar, the Grunts are the Ungoy, the Brutes are the Jo uh, Johani, and the Hunters are the ones that are hard to pronounce. They're either because it 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 it's different based on the form they're assuming. The base like worm is called Lekgolo or something like that, and the actual hunter form is called like a Malekgolo or something. Um, it, it, that's the one I've always had difficulty pronouncing. But so, which of the the covenant species? Oh, and there's also the same. The prophets are also the San Shium. so we'll include the prophets slash uh, Shan Shum in this as well. Which all member right. of the Covenant well, race do you think has the best cheeks? All right. Well, here's the thing. Let, let, let's let's go through the list. We'll start from smallest and work our way up to up to the uh, the, the tippy top where the profits are. So we're gonna start with the grunts. So here's the thing: the grunts are like you know corner side whores. They've probably been fucked by everything because they're the we're, smallest <coughs> things there. We're if talking elite, about. If, if an elite needs to relieve itself and it can't find another <laughs> female elite to fuck, how many of those grunts do you think just get raped and left in alleyways? Like he's not well, here's doing the anything. Thing. There are no female already. elites. The thing is, there are no female elites in the Covenant. The female elites stayed behind on Sangelios to raise the children to become part of the Covenant, to train the children, and to also protect the homestead. But that that's even better because the elites are all sex starved, so all they do is just fuck grunts all day, probably. So I, that's nothing that that isn't already happening in the covenant already. I was gonna yeah. say we're we're talking about grunts here, considering the fact that not only is Chief a fucking tall motherfucker, we're also talking about the elites being pretty tall. These things are probably a mix between a midget and an own hole. They're just like, yep, we gotta do it. And just scoop one up off the ground. Yeah, they're like they're like two and a half feet tall. Get going. It's fucking ridiculous. Then you look at jackals. Jackals are bony. They're very skinny. They're lanky. It would probably be like like humping a piece of rock because it's probably all bone. They also look very pointy, which probably wouldn't be fun. Uh, and they're birds, so it could, be, for all we know, it could be really weird down there. Yeah, no, that's a possibility. You might be fucking an egg hole for all you know. Um, so yeah, there's that, which is kind of strange. Then we move up to the elites, which are probably the ones that you could most closely have human sex with. Granted, you would never be able to, as a normal person, get behind them to do it, but I'm sure Chief could find a way. Yes, and you definitely don't want to use the mouth because we've seen what's inside those mandibles. The funny uh, thing is, like, is the grunt like a Chinese the... finger trap for your dick. I mean, the grunt heads are very small, and they don't exactly they don't really have lips or anything. There's not a lot between you, you and shove that it throat. through the eyeball. Fuck it, you're gonna kill the thing. <laughs> no, anyway. no, no. I'm saying that grunts are actually probably the most efficient at oral sex of the covenant because it's lit their mouth is literally just a hole okay there's let's call nothing it what it there is. you let's could call just it you could sex. plug right in it's an odal yeah, like let's call it what it is though because it, it's not consensual in any way shape or form what, oh, no. what you're going to be doing to them it's oral rape they just it, 
you know, it's the equivalency of you pulled all the chick's teeth out first. No, you know, uh, call sign. I wish I could just get him in on the call. Uh, call sign Coyote. If you're on Twitter, just give me a line because it sounds like it would be relief. Because he's right on everything about Halo, and I love it. Uh, call um, uh, call sign Coyote. If you're on Twitter, just shoot me a DM. Uh, it would be it'd be, it'd be nice to talk uh, talk about this shit sometime with somebody who's probably knows more about Halo than me. <clears throat> and maybe I we'll mean, bring you on the the the, the chat the chat about the show sometime. But yeah, he's correct. Uh, Geek are, are very aggressive during sex and it's been implied that they kind of have a mating season um so they're probably also very pent the fuck up yeah so that would that would definitely be kind of weird at least at the end of the day so you, you're you you're going through there you go through the elites now the next one up in terms of size is probably going to be a brute uh, hunters are a little bit bigger so the brute is kind of like too hairy it, it it's it's hairy but it's kind of like that is you're, you're, you're fucking are designed for gay sex you're Thank fucking you. a chick that's really in the plaid. Okay. No, no, it's that, no, no. It's that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. No, no, no. You're dating a feminist that has never shaved in their life. That too. I you mean, gotta deal with it, the jungle just to, it, get, it's to the, get to the entrance. It's the equivalency of fucking a lumberjack with a vagina. But th that's basically what it is. <clears throat> is that, that, that That's what you're going to be getting if you're fucking a brute. And they're, again, they're probably the easiest ones to have human <laughs> sex with. Although I it's kind of be like a person fucking a pachyderm. Check the. Uh, so first off, Vader Cool Studios, thanks for the super chat. Says, gasp, the aborter would never. Anyway, keep going. Ooh. But um, and Vader right. Cool Studio says, man, I left for five minutes. Yep. And it's just, oh, yeah, this is what you came back to, buddy. Right. So, so, so that's what you got when you go to the brutes. Now you go to the hunters. Now the problem with the hunters is you have all those individual fucking worms because the hunters, the hunters are basically just like a massive orgy. Well, here's so the thing. you just you just dive into those things and you just start humping and shit just starts happening. If, if, you know? if here's here's the thing, the only reason I would say he'd probably have a better time with that is considering the fact that it's multiple different things and they're they're you know supposed to be part of a hive mind. They could technically make a custom experience that you wouldn't get with any other living creature. That's so here's true. The, or they here's the crazy thing about hand. hunters. Here's the crazy thing about hunters. They don't really. They can. <clears throat> In Halo Nightfall, they are able to assume the shape of a human being to the point where somebody mistook the hunter mass for somebody else. So they're not going to turn into mystique or anything, but they can assume a human shape. And yes, it is just a bunch of worms. So the, the worm could just coil around the equipment and just go burr. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. but here's the here's the, the only one other thing though is that again we are assuming that this is something that is going to be done on a battlefield. So this is th this is not going to be something that the hunter is going to be doing willingly. Again, so I, all I can picture in my head is Master Chief just grabbing the individual <laughs> worms out of its body <laughs> and just impaling them one by one <laughs> on his dick to kill it over a course I mean, of you know it's several much, hours probably they, they uh, are just worms they pretty much have four teeth that extend out from their body right and after that it's just a straight hole all the way yeah, down pretty much I mean, so I, my, yeah. my idea was him just fucking them death. so it's more of quantity over quality i guess you'd say and that's you know it'd probably be a more um, efficient method than just individually trying to shoot into it just rip one out at a time yeah. while you're running around it yep and then the you get to the prophets, which are at the highest. Oh, actually, sorry, no, we forgot about the buggers. We forgot oh, about the, the buggers. Yeah. Uh, so we do. We do still have the buggers. So again, that one. I'm not sure how that would go, considering. I don't think I'm pretty sure they're stru they're structured like insects. So I'm assuming they have some kind of an exoskeleton. Yeah. So they do. It would it would probably be like trying to you know punch holes in an egg, I guess. And then just you know slushing around the goop on the inside. Yeah, it wouldn't really point. work unless you got Doom Guy on it. Yeah, basically. Uh, so that one might not be as fun. Although if you fuck them, you could also ride them. Um, the other thing, okay. So then the last one we have is the prophets, and the prophets. Let's be honest, it's just basically fucking the elderly. You, you're going. Yeah. It's going to be the easiest and probably like, the most satisfying one. It, it 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 would basically just be like having sex with Kathy Griffin. <laughs> uh. Nightwish fan, thanks for the super chat. Says, so where is the covenant in the Halo show? Barely uh, there. Uh, I'll, tell like you, no, 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 I'll, tell, I'll tell you what where they are. They're dropping 10 people on episode one, or sorry, 20 people on episode one that get killed easily and then never fucking show up again outside of one or two scenes that do absolutely nothing. 
So Lamp wants to know what about the engineers. So the thing about the engineers is they don't oh. really that you if you fuck them, you might actually kill them. Yes, they do have tentacles, but like they they're jellyfish. They kind of just pop. So okay, somebody could work with that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it there's people who are into that. Just turn it into a pin cushion. We understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this show has taken us to dark places. <laughs> Nightwish fan, actual hunters is too expensive, so we'll just have the worms attacking instead. The only thing that brings to mind is, Mom, can we buy hunters? No, we have hunters <laughs> at home. Hunters at home, just the giant splurge of freaking worms. Halo Forward Unto Dawn gave us a whole fucking hunter fight scene on a yep. $10 million budget mm -hmm. and had grunts, jackals, and elites. And a chief and... that never took his helmet off. A chief that never took his helmet off had a better looking suit and was able to do his fight scenes in the suit. Okay. And I just want you to keep in mind that the budget for Halo Forward of the Dawn was like half the budget of a single episode of this show. I want everyone to fucking remember that. Yep. Go watch Halo Forward of the Dawn. It is a way better Halo movie. You're not going to be wasting nearly as much time as many brain and, cells and uh, definitely a better purchase if you're someone that unfortunately has this show. Available. And here's the best part. Halo Forward on the Dawn and Halo Nightfall are fucking canon and they don't have any inaccuracies. <laughs> the funny thing is, oh, it's not canon. It's not canon. It's easy to be canon when you don't have characters who blah, blah, blah. Lasky is in it. Okay. First fuck off on that. Locke, okay, he's in Nightfall. Come on, Randall from the canon, Sedna from the canon, and Sullivan in Halo Four: One of the Dawn returns as an ONI operative in Halo um, Hunt the Truth, which actually is a nice evolution of the character because if you remember in Halo Four: One of the Dawn, Sully is the one who broke in and started hacking all this shit and got the the footage from the Master Chief's fucking helmet cam. So that's how, it, you know, it, it's kind of a little cool idea that they go, okay, that's probably how he went in and got O&I's attention because he hacked into their shit. So, you know, it, it it's very easy to go into the Halo lore and tell a story without being bogged down by anything else. And that's a line that a lot of these people like to drop is that they didn't want to feel restricted or hindered by the previous, uh, you know, material that has come out, which is what Kathleen Kennedy fucking said about Star Wars. It's what all these motherfuckers say about every one of these fucking adaptations they want to put out. Uh, it's what there's it's what Pedro Pascal is saying about The Last of Us right now. It happens every fucking time. But this script comes is so original in the sense that it has nothing to do with fucking Halo that it really does at times come off as somebody else's script that didn't get picked up and got repurposed into a Halo show. And I know we say this a lot about a lot of projects, but that's kind of the fucking point. You think about the egos on these fucking people. You see them on Twitter. You see them on you know any kind of social media, how highly they think of themselves and how I can do it better. What they're doing is basically fucking theft. It is fucking intellectual theft. They are taking somebody else's world, somebody else's story, and telling their own fucking version of it that in no way connects to or facilitates the work, the works of the original creator. Okay, they're using a well-known property to tell their original and inferior stories. I don't know about you, but to me, that's fucking theft. Rant over. I would agree with you <clears throat> if it wasn't for one aspect, and that's the fact that so many of these studios are perfectly fine with handing their projects over to people that have no care in the world about it. Yeah. And it's really disrespectful when someone who is the original creator isn't around anymore to tell you not to fucking do it, especially with something like fucking Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is fucking getting ready to go through its personal damnation from the left. Yeah, and they said this the exact same shit as well. Like, oh, we're going to tell our version. We don't want to feel hindered. We want to write gonna, the Tolkien novel that Tolkien never wrote. Yeah, we're gonna it's we're just... gonna write the the story that he never wrote. It's like um, he would have wrote it if he actually gave a shit. So here's the here's the funny part. All right, Destiny is a better Halo story than Halo live action. Yes, 
I'll agree with that. Got it. I mean, Fucking... any, if you're going based on those standards, any story or most stories are better than the Halo story because it le- it's not even entertaining. Like that, That's the no. thing, that, too. Is it, it's, it's not, again, from what you're describing, based on what you're describing to me, assuming some of the things that you're describing to me are true, uh, and what I've seen already, it's not doing good at keeping its own narrative at all. I mean, they're they're just adding random things into this. Half the stuff doesn't make any sense. Like we said before, it it the one thing that kind of confused me about this was the needless changes that were made. Like the changes that made absolutely no sense of why it was removed. Like there wasn't a political motivation, there wasn't a diversity motivation. Some of those changes it leads me to think that this was like you said before that this was another project that was repurposed or a script that was reworked that they just happened to have on the table and uh actually while while we're still talking about this i'm gonna hop on uh i am <coughs> for a second and just actually see who the writers credited for this are so real quick while you're doing that <clears throat> i i will say one thing that i i actually kind of felt sad about in this episode it has nothing to do with the Halo universe at all. This is just personally as someone who's been around it a lot. Um, they have Burn Gorman as pretty much the villain who's the you know Uber Nazi that took over and, and is executing people on the on the planet for diversity hire girl. Yeah. Um he has this scene where he is in this giant bath that he's doing, and he has the assassin come in and he tells her to do the task. The man has a cigar burning at the start of the scene. And he not only puts it out inside the bathwater, he just leaves it there to let it float. I mean, you're not going to relight the cigar, okay? No. When, when you put a cigar out, you put a cigar out. No, but at the same time, you don't leave it fucking like a you don't turd leave, Yeah, you don't leave it in the pool. <laughs> it just looked like this turd floating along and just looks just... so ridiculous. <sighs> like, it just looks like the, like Governor Venture just like, dropped the deuce in the middle of his own pool. Is what it looked like. Like I'm glad they showed him smoking that thing in the fir- in the start of the scene because otherwise I would have thought that was a man. Uh, yeah, that was his right, exactly. There's a fucking turd floating along. Yeah, so both of the guys who did this series, uh, the main ones anyway, uh, were uh, two guys named Stephen Kane and Kyle Killen, and basically uh, Stephen Kane is from again television school. That type of thing. Did episodes of uh, main, mainly uh, episodes of a series called The Last Ship, which I've never really heard of. I have no idea what that is. Um, and The Closer. <laughs> it's just the fucking Kara Sedgwick show. And American Dad. That that that's what he has on his resume for writing before doing Halo. He only has six total to, credits. I would have to know what he wrote for American Dad because there were certainly some episodes that were bad. Oh, sorry, I stand corrected. Those that those are his production standpoints. Last Ship wrote fifty six episodes. The Closer wrote thirteen episodes, uh, and then a lot of like random ones with television without a trace, NCIS, Alias, that type of crap. Um, Really, there's no other experience beyond that. So nothing sci-fi related that this mm. guy's done other than other than Halo, which is would kind explain of why it doesn't feel like a giant space story. Yep. And then the other one you have is uh, a man named Kyle Killen, and he, again, very much a TV person. Uh, Mind Games, again, haven't seen that. Don't know what that is. Also did a series called Awake and Lone Star. And those are his writing credits, along with Fear Street Part 1, which was a Netflix uh, thing. I actually kind of wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, those guys. And then there's also one other random dude, Justin Jewel Gilmer, who is credited with just one episode for writing credits. I don't know why that random dude was on there just for one episode. Who the fuck knows, man? This, this show does all kinds of weird shit. Oh, there's a bot. Oh, we got more and of zero pounce on that motherfucker. Wee! Yep. Mod's more definitely on top of that tonight. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's he's fucking fastest mod in the West. <sighs> uh, Samurai Knight thanks for the super chat. Says I am for Master Chief taking the profit cheeks, the best for breaking the spirits of the covenant. Stream it live for all to see and not deny what happened. <sighs> I can agree with that. <clears throat> Quickest way to make them hate him is uh 
do that, and then blow up the the halo rings after you've done that to him. Like just set off the halo rings, nuke the universe, redo this. I'm I am actually kind of scared to see what they're gonna fuck up with with episode five, because we know that the very next episode is gonna be them putting freaking both those parts together for the I mean, uh, the relics that he found. Here's also the other thing. What the f- with the way this show has been going right now? What the fuck do you do for the season finale because they haven't built on a plot at all? The like, only thing <clears throat> the only thing I can think of them doing at the end of this uh 9 episode arc would possibly be the whole rebellion starting up. Try to do like a Star Wars thing of our groups finally together, we can finally fight back against the Nazi. Like, that's about the extent of I see them doing something because they're already going to blow their load with whatever these relics were. We already know that. We definitely know that the uh, the, the second Spartan that's supposed to be the tie-dye freaking feminist one they're going to try to do is probably going to be a freaking story that goes absolutely nowhere. I mean, it sh- the, the, the logical conclusion would be that the season finale is the fall of Reach. That it is where a lot of people are probably expecting this to go, considering Reach is there, and it takes yeah. place right before Halo One, apparently. Yeah, it would it would make sense, and then you would tease the Halo as the second season. Mm-hmm. But I that's the other thing though is you got five episodes left, so that means you would you're going to have to in some point in those five episodes you are going to have to have the fall of Reach, and I don't think you can do that adequately with the way that they've been progressing this no they can't it, 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 they'd have to take a fucking heel turn in order to fucking do that uh, they, they, uh, there's dark, just no building anywhere dark designs uh, at web for the season finale they will finally discover a plot <laughs> oh, the, Star Trek the plot Trek. here has been water thin again like i was saying it just doesn't feel like they've made any progression the 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 chick that's supposed to be you know potentially leading a, a resistance force here soon has done nothing in four episodes except be baggage for other people to deal with and a whiny bitch about it. Mm-hmm. Chief does get like very little development. It's all stuff that's freaking absolutely stupid as far as a writing team goes. Yeah. And then of course you know our new third plot element, which is Keys and the freaking uh, cat. Is it Cat or K? I, I fucking never Kai. To remember. Kai. Something along those lines. It starts with a K. It's going to end with her. Kai and boxes. Miranda are going to get freaky. Yeah. I mean, no. that, that's what that's my that's what I hope for the season finale. <laughs> I want to see us. I want to see that fucking eight foot tall, that seven foot tall Spartan grab that tiny ass Miranda keys and just put her against the wall. That's what I want to see. I want the meme recreated. But. Uh... Yeah, I just, I, again, I don't see this going anywhere positive. It's already started off on the worst crooked foot possible on episode one and only went fucking downhill from there. Wasn't even aware that was a possibility. Uh, Lollipop Lord of, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, says, honestly, I have no clue where this is going. The entire thing is a mess in terms of pacing. You think if the fall of Reach was coming, they would have been building up to it, right? Yeah, I mean, it, there's nothing there. It's It just does not fucking exist. The, 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 this thing is paced at the speed of butter under a fluorescent lamp. Like, the, this, this isn't a show. I, like, I feel like I'm watching filler. Yeah. You're watching so a show, show comprised of filler. It's a show. Yeah. It, it's the, uh, it's the unfilled aspect of the Lay's bag that we're in the middle of watching. And we're not even in a good bag. And again, there are so few fight scenes. Like episode one had a, like a five minute long fight scene out of a 50 minute long episode. Episode two didn't have a single fucking bullet fired. Episode three didn't have a single fucking bullet fired. And episode four had Got 10 three. seconds of, I, of, of shooting. I, oh, sorry. No, we got two separate segments of shooting and it was all very quick. It was the group of mourners being shot up and attacked by the thing, and then the other one was when the uh, assassin was in the middle of trying to kill Quan. And then and... the hunters, but I, I really don't count that because it was so it was done and over before it began. Yeah, 
it's like there's so I don't know why they are so afraid of putting shooting in a show based on a first person shooter. It's like filming an episode of Grey's Anatomy in a fucking 7-Eleven. So one thing that I was just talking about before Cham came into the room to talk about it, uh, it, it's the fact of a Spartan breaching through a door and missing two of his three shots and his one shot that did land barely wings the target. Can you just tell Cham to grab your mic and yell about that for a minute? <laughs> I want uh, Cham to put some input. He's had to suffer through this shit. Yeah, he has. We'll see. We'll see if he rolls back through that door here in a second. <laughs> Just, like, just scream like at him. Just, just scream at him. And say, Cham, get over here, you bitch. But, but yeah, it is without a doubt. Like, and it's not only that. <laughs> Fuck the series is fucking garbage. Please don't fucking watch it. It is a slog and painful. There you go. You, you that, your five that's your PSA for the week, kids. <laughs> it's a. Uh... It, it got so bad. Episode no, four, we broke him. We broke him. Episode four turns into everybody having fucking stormtrooper from from Soren rolling in and missing two of his three shots. Realistically, three out of his three shots, and then them escaping on a bike while they're being shot at by eight people with vectors is just fucking outright. It's terrible. I fucking love whenever he fucking does that. It's the funniest shit. <laughs> oh my god! You oh, sound like you're out of dying. control. Are you okay? Oh, <laughs> 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 oh man! Stop talking! Uh, I'm killing him. Uh, Uber makes okay. it. No, none of us are smart. Most of us have at least caught oh. the first episode of this, if not more. Oh my god. I want those fucking viewership numbers on this thing. Dude, I don't I wanna, even want, I want to see that shit. I don't even want to see the viewership numbers. That's how much I hope this no, thing no, no. dies. I, I want to see the viewership numbers because I want confirmation that this thing dropped off a fucking cliff after the first episode. I don't even think Be it got the first episode. I think most people got five minutes into it and were like, this is shit. Regardless, the point is, is that Paramount wa wants to hang their fucking hat, even though, like I said before, it's a kind of a one man race. Paramount Plus wanted to hang their hats on the fact that this broke viewership <sighs> records for that platform, which is a it's a far cry from the from the bigger streaming platforms that are out there. Um, and I want to see what the viewer count on this was because we know the first it's at episode least it's and be able to about, compare it. Yeah, I want to see the drop off after episode one. Yeah, because I, I guarantee want... you, everybody used the free trial to watch this shit. Okay, real quick. Oh, one hundred percent. Soul, soul, or a pirate like us. Yeah. Uh, soul and the Lich. Two out of three shots missed. Huh. XCOM: The Master Chief Edition. <laughs> I will say, XCOM, Ooh. XCOM would have had much better probability chances of hitting than this fucking show. I'm right next to you with a shotgun. Like literally, he oh is he is maybe two or three feet away from her, oh. and he has a rhino pistol. He misses two of the shots, and his third one only wings right on the side. Oh. You're sure about that? A 99 percent chance <laughs> of having a headshot up close and you fucking miss. <laughs> <laughs> you know Noobs. he's not fucking wrong. He's not. <sighs> oh man. Oh, Ned four eighteen says, "Thank God you're not now. using edibles." No, Mako is on edibles. Uh, I did both. Oh. I did a, I did a hit, and then I did two squares of uh, tens. Ooh. So, oh, you got twenty milligrams. That's a fun yeah. I got, one. I got twenty milligrams in my system. I've been smoking every once in a while, which is when I've been going uh, mute. I don't know. It's <clears throat> why isn't Cham in here? Like he's clearly able to contribute. To, you know, <laughs> he was. He was a little bit foggier earlier, so I think part of it is he just doesn't want to relive the absolute atrocity of this. Meanwhile, he's over in the other room with YouTube watching this. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh my God. Again, this series this series just took a fucking ugly oh, bath. So I'm cooking, which you need to do some uh, fucking I <laughs> Yes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> marriage okay. kids <laughs> okay. oh, that is the, the funniest only, shit 
so so uh, real quick, Theodore, uh, you you guys seem rather lucid for apparently being high. It's because I've had the entire site up on the for the last like three episodes, re going through it like every five to ten seconds and going, yeah, this was something that I completely spaced about because I fucking put my ass out of the fucking uh, show. Uh, Cumber Cumberbatch Pepper Pot, thanks for the super justice. I'm drunk. God bless everyone. Yeah. Apparently like people. That. Apparently, people like Cham more when he's screaming through your microphone. Oh, I can understand I mean, that. He's I got mean, little... it, is, it is a bit more subdued than the normal screaming through a close-range <laughs> microphone. Yes. Yeah, you're being a good housewife, Cham. It's okay. He says he's cooking. I'm you're cooking. being a good housewife. Yeah, he is right, though. Here, Make sure to give him a congratulatory slap on the ass. <laughs> 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 it's a dying pterodactyl. <laughs> remember when he remember the last time he did that when Vash was on the stream and yeah. Vash almost shit himself? Yeah, no, he lost his mind and he almost that, blew out our eardrums. That was fucking amazing. <sighs> oh my god. <sighs> Yeah, uh, this is not, this is gonna kill me. Video. Jesus Christ. So so here so here's my question now. What is the next thing that is coming out that you think is gonna be a franchise raper? Oh, a hundred percent Lord of the Rings. The the only thing I can see when is that the, coming out, by the way, actually. Like I, I said, I, like doing, I said, I thought it? it was I like I said, I thought it was supposed to be coming out at like tail end of this it year. It comes out like later this year or something, I think. But but that is another series I entirely oh, <laughs> I entirely <laughs> see that being a complete clusterfuck. Simply for the fact that you're like you were saying earlier, everything's got to be Game of Thrones now. These people want to fucking Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, and it doesn't fucking need to happen. Apparently, there's uh, going to be a rape September scene in 2nd. Lord of the Rings. In Amazon's Lord of the Rings, apparently, there's going to be a rape scene. Uh, September September second is the date when it premieres. I don't know if I read it or not. I thought I think I read it, but Cumberbatch <sighs> Pepper Pod said uh, saying, "I'm drunk. God bless everyone." I, you I did read that, that yes. Okay, okay, good. The, uh, Theodore uh, said in the comments, it's coming out on the anniversary of Tolkien's death. Please, I hope to fucking God not, because that would be another <laughs> Why fucking... would he use that date? God, that would be another what fucking just not his shit birthday? on the pile. I was going to say, yeah, you can use his that birthday is... or any <laughs> other day. <laughs> is is this symbolic? Is this the day the franchise dies? Lord of Gisu Gargo Gis Gis Gargo Episode Four's choreography gave me an aneurysm. What fighting there was in that episode was fucking trash. Uh, the only two that come to mind, like immediately, is the one where they tried to kidnap her. The resistance tried to kidnap her, and he just beat the shit out of the three guards, which looked really bad. And then when the assassin attempt was going on, like ten minutes later in the show. Oh man. Uh, okay, so let me, let me show, dude. I'm actually gonna look that up real quick and, and see if I can find out when that's releasing. Oh, uh, God, this man is gonna kill me. Jesus. Uh, it, it, either the show itself is gonna kill you because of cringe, or it's gonna kill you because you have to take so much stuff to get through it. Uh, publication day is second of September, twenty twenty two. Is, app uh, is apparently when they're supposed to be releasing it. Yep. And then... And then... I can't remember when Tolkien died. Uh... Okay, no, thank God it's not. Huh? Uh, okay, yeah. one, of the, one of the comments were like, oh, they're going to be releasing it on, on Tolkien's death day or whatever the fuck. Yeah, uh, anniversary of Tolkien's death. Thank Christ they aren't. Oh, wait, okay, so they're not. Never mind, they are. Jesus Christ. I miss I misread it because they have it in that weird Japanese setup where they have the numbers for uh, days and months backwards. So the show is coming out on the de the anniversary of Tolkien's death. Yep. yep. September September second, twenty twenty two. They are actually releasing it on his death day. That is the most disrespectful shit. That that is gonna tank so hard, and that's gonna be just the extra little turd on his grave that they can throw out. That is Good that God. is actually disgusting. I thought for for sure that that wasn't the case. <laughs> reading deeper into it, it's like nope, yep, 
it's, it's fucking it's gonna be the second. It's like God damn it. Can 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 Hollywood just be stopped? Unfortunately, no. They can be competed with, but they can't be fucking stopped. I mean, I mean, there's not a lot of like the problem is there's not a lot of competition for, at present for big for big Hollywood. Oh no! Like the the you've got a lot like of you have a lot DC, of indie no. creators out there, but the problem is their means of distribution is not on par with these big studios, and it's not going to be. And yeah, the I only see. people who you have trying to pick up that gauntlet is what it's fucking Daily Mail, right? They just built a movie uh, studio. Yeah, I think that they they did. But he, here's here's the problem: is you used to have two different film markets. The two big ones, anyway, in the United States. They used to always kind of compete with each other, so you could kind of get in in one or the other. It used to be New York and L.A., and then eventually yeah. it shifted where New York was the television destination, L.A. is the movie destination. So they both kind of picked their own sides. But you, they used to be able to mix and match and do different other things back then with the two different sides. It was a lot a bit more open, I guess, to doing certain things. But it used really to be wild. better because then you had a little bit more competition going one way or the other, and they were willing to go different ways with people. That was basically what happened in the 70s when they just let everybody do whatever the fuck they wanted. Well, again, um, like it was being talked about in chat a little bit ago, um, <clears throat> there's always going to be some kind of third party that can get started on movies and, and personally done movies. I think it'll just take time. Because once you've built up a, a separate economy that's, you know, not freaking, you know, like Eric's uh, July likes to say a lot, is not funding the people that hate you. Um, yeah. Once you start getting that to, to you know, Daily Wire or these <coughs> Korean or, or small time startups, indie projects, once you get those people, you know, into their own place where they're making high budget films, they'll definitely start taking all the freaking audience away from the, the people that, you know, don't give a shit about their audience. The thing is, though, I don't have a lot of hope for the new movie studio that the, the Daily Wire is doing. And it, the, the, the exact, I think it's going to go the exact same way that Vox Day went. Oh because, boy. you know, huh? I said, oh, boy. The, um, Vox Day, you know, game developer started getting involved in the culture war and everything. And he started putting out novels and content and comics. And I never liked them. And I thought Vox himself was kind of cringe. But the reason I didn't like his entertainment is because I don't want, like, you know, politics in these books. I want to read a story. You can have politics. Sure, go right ahead. I like some political entertainment, but the politics has to be in service of the story. The politics... The the, the 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 fucking story cannot be slave to the politics that you are wanting to express. It can't be agenda. It has to be the subtext. So when you have people like Vox Day who come out, they they have the same problem as the left. It's just politics of a different kind is shoved into the fucking story. And I remember the exact moment where I said, "This is what's going to happen. It's just going to be right wing version of the shit." Is when Vox Day put out a comic book called alt hero and there was like a three page long segment in the comic book where this guy is talking about like employee benefits and shit and you know basically breaking down what the writer's politics are and what their economic beliefs are and i'm like this isn't what i want to fucking read this is i Show me superheroes punching monsters. I don't want to hear the details of their fucking dental plan and how welfare works in this universe. So, like, fuck uh, off. Real quick, two things that kind of, you know, I, I've been thinking about while we've been talking about this, and Eon's kind of been on the, the touch of the subject as well, is how mentally bankrupt Hollywood's been over the last few years and how absolutely destroyed the uh, Western market for entertainment has been getting hit by, like, places like Korea and Japan. So uh, Korean media, they ended up doing a movie called Train to Busan. And great yeah, movie, great movie. Thing. America turned around, and I think like three to four months after the, the movie came out, uh, American Hollywood was just like, yeah, we're just going to do Train to Busan. 
and just like do a direct copy of it and call it something other uh, something last, else. They're calling it Last Train to New York. Last Train to New York, and it's it's literally the exact same fucking thing. So more like morally and, and artistically bankrupt, fucking grade A for Hollywood. Thanks for showing us. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, a lot of people talk about this, but you know, comics getting outsold by manga twenty four seven. And I always like to point this out. People are like, oh, those stories are all so bad. I'm like, dude, as much as people want to shit on um, My Hero Academia, it does the comic book trope much It is a very good superhero anything. story. It does everything a superhero story from the West used to do better than anything that Marvel or DC can do right now. Um, so I want to point to something that Hill Brig is talking about in the comments here. He said, did you, uh, did you know that comic books were more competitive and genre diverse regulations and angry mothers, mostly because of Fred, uh, and got a lot of steam because of Frederick Wortham, um, forced comic book companies to make only superhero stories because it was the safest genre to do. The West needs to embrace more ideologies and original political messages, not just hard left centered politics and an immersive story not served for an activist ad, no satire either. The other thing, though, is that, you know, to, to, to touch on what he's talking about here and also what you're kind of been talking about is that and what we kind of started going on with the Daily Wire is entertainment has become so politicized because the left is really doubling down on using their using entertainment to espouse their message. And that's always been there to some extent, but it used to be a wider variety of messages. And a lot of times it was completely accidental and it, it was more so the meaning was applied to the works more, more so because of the time of the, that you know, the work came out. I, I, I point to this example a lot, but you know, night, uh, night of the living dead accidentally becoming about racism. Um, Invasion of the body snatchers was originally supposed to be, you know, an anti-conformist message, but it ended up because it came out when it did having, you know, all, all kinds of commentary about the Red Scare, you know, kind of forced into the film, even though it wasn't initially intended to be such. So and, you know, the right one thing that they're doing by getting in entertainment is they say that, you know, in order to have these values continued on and to spread, there needs to be representation of conservative ideas and entertainment. And while I don't necessarily disagree with that, I don't want it to be as blatant and on the nose and hammered into your fucking ear that the left has been doing it because it's it's cringe regardless of who it comes from. Tell me a story. Don't tell me what you think the world should be. If you're going to look at the economics of doing something like that, where you would actually be able to have legitimate competition to Hollywood studios, you'd have to initially pretty much, you'd probably have to have a couple of small companies involved, but you would probably wind up needing to have a Canon esque studio or a, <coughs> uh, a new world pictures or something like that from back in the day, like a Corman type studio or yeah. a, 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 you know, something like that where you are making a lot of lower budgeted films that some of them gross more than others but again it's more of a quantity over quality thing a lot of the time and you're trying to pick a lot of these young directors out again that's why robert corman uh, that's why roger corman was so good at the shit he did because he could pick out a lot of directors i can't remember how many oscar winners have actually come out of his various films that he's done but i know there's a lot but the, the, that's the point is you have to start off doing something like that. And Blumhouse basically did that. That's why they've blown up recently in years is because they got really, really good at making cheap, shitty remake or rip off movies. Um, sometimes they put out one that's good, like The Hunt. We watched that. We thought that was pretty good. That, was, that actually was a legitimately good movie. Right. And that was from Blumhouse. And Halloween 2018 was from Blumhouse. <coughs> yeah. But... For each one of those gems, there's three or four stinkers, like an Invisible Man or a Halloween Kills or a, a Fantasy Island or some shit like that. You know, there's ones that don't pan out and don't look good and don't play out right and suck. Again, a lot like Canon used to do. And now, it, but if you're going to do that, you have to go with that format until you are at a point where you have enough uh, of, a, of a backlog of film and enough films that are popular enough where you can start making higher budgeted movies. And if you are going to actually do something like this, it's going to be on the decades scale. It's going to be like a 10 year mm -hmm. thing to get that studio from point A 
to point B where you're on the level where you can start handling things like this. Like you, you're looking at the end of that 10 years to maybe kind of straddling up on a studio like uh, Legendary or Lionsgate, you know, something like that at that level. And then you're moving on to the Paramounts and the Universals and eventually you're going to get up to the Warner Brothers and the Disneys. But again, that's many, many years down the road. If you just want to have a presence, I think you can do it that way. But the problem is you're never going to be able, unfortunately, because of the way that Hollywood is built, you're never going to be able to have an equal presence in entertainment because of the way it is. It's kind of like how we all we were discussing before of all the Twitter alternatives just wind up fucking sinking into the dirt. Yeah. It's the same. It's the exact same thing. It's like you're just suffocated by the market. But that's the point is. And you'll see the exact same games that they played with Parler and Gab and all those where, you know, they've tried to halt their distribution. I, yep, I guarantee exactly. goddamn to you there's going to be action brought against you no know, frivolous lawsuits, a bunch of bullshit oh, thrown yeah. at the Daily Wire because of these movies they're making. Oh, yeah. One hundred and ten percent. There's going to be stuff just because of the people that run the studio. It doesn't matter what's in the film. It yeah, and it could be things as simple it. as, okay, this movie isn't allowed on the App Store, or this one isn't allowed on Amazon. Yep. They're going to just chip, 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 chip away at you. That's their, yeah, that's exactly. their tactic. And, and the other thing is... That's, a, that's the unfortunate thing, is they have the connections to do it. Yeah, that's the worst part. But, you know, they're continuing to speak on Blum, Blumhouse and the economics of Blumhouse and how you would actually build a competitive movie studio... You know, Red Letter Media had a really good analogy uh, when talking about Blumhouse. And this is probably the best way I've ever heard it put out is that Blumhouse is basic and streaming services are like a buffet. OK, if you go to the buffet, you don't there's just some things that like you just don't grab. Right. Like you don't grab a salad from a fucking buffet. It's going to be shit. You don't grab lobster from a fucking buffet. It's going to be shit. You go there for what you know is going to be good. You go to a Chinese buffet and the egg rolls are always going to be, you know, eh, all right. It works. It's serviceable. The egg drop soup is going to taste like shit. So you never touch the egg drops, egg drop soup. But Blumhouse is effectively, okay, the uh, the fucking buffet. Okay. And the steak the you know the french fries the stuff that you know people are going to eat that's you know their halloween 2018s their fucking um what was it happy death day i think they were involved with the hunt mm -hmm. the purge but they they have to have all those other little tentpole movies okay which is the stuff that you might not want to eat at the buffet but it makes the customer go okay this is actually a buffet and it's not just an all you can eat egg roll shop OK, it's the other alternatives that somebody might try eventually that it facilitates the other stuff that you're going to have that, you know, that you're going to put out your Halloween 2018s. It helps fund them and all that shit. So it's you you have to put out schlock. You have to put out your trash. It, it also inflates your numbers. It makes you seem bigger and better than you are like Amazon Prime. Again, a great example. They have maybe. At any given time, maybe a hundred movies you want to watch and a thousand movies you've never fucking heard of. But that is it's more it's better for them to say we have one thousand movies on our platform, but you've only ever heard of a hundred of them. But they still get to say we have a thousand movies on our platform. Uh, you know, that makes somebody feel like their monthly subscription is actually worth the shit, even though they're probably just going to use it to watch Predator. Or so, you get the you get the people that talk to them about the the subscription service the same way we talked about uh, cable companies back during the invention and the the production of all these streaming sites, which is why are you paying you know a hundred dollars if you're going to get you know three hundred uh, shows or, or sites that you can go to, and you're only going to go to two maybe four of them over the course of an entire month and watch stuff on them. Like a hundred percent, that's gonna that's gonna start being the mentality of why are you spending fifteen dollars for the streaming service when you're only gonna watch two or three movies on it? When you could buy this streaming service, and you, this streaming service has you know maybe twenty or thirty things that you might watch on on constant setup. Um, and then one of the things I noticed earlier was uh, Zero Mega was talking. He's like, uh, "Yo, up with the Disney uh, with Disney being uh, <coughs> even more stupid. Do you think DeSantis is gonna backhand the mouse?" So I, I mean, personally, I, I from what I heard, Disney is basically heel turned on some of their shit. 
they, they kind of have to considering the fact that they are based out of Florida. If they want to keep pushing this shit, DeSantis can easily strip all their fucking protections away and then, you know, all sorts real of shit. Quick, can though, real quick, though, we're probably going to go ahead and wrap up here soon. It's been a while, so last cigarette, and then uh, we're going to wrap up. So any questions you guys had about the Halo series or anything else, uh, this is your uh, last cigarette warning. I have one word. God. Why? That's two words. That, that's two words, yep. Yeah. Mako can't count. No, I can't. <laughs> that's, it's that edible kicking in. Um, uh I, I have I have a phrase that describes my opinion on this show. Dodged a bullet. Yeah, no, you you dodged the shit out of that. I let the president take the fucking bullet. I don't get paid that much. No, Mako and I don't. Why are they thinking that you and me and Cham all live in the same house? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I don't I think no that'd idea. be a great idea because I already have a trouble with two dogs in this house. I'd rather not have four. And one potentially eating more wires than another. Yeah, my dog is weird about eating wires. They pickles chewed through the fucking lines on my fucking generator. Not the gas lines, but the, the copper like some copper wiring. Uh oh, I, I just realized he he was asking us if we were Florida men, not uh, not with you. No, mm. we're we're fr I'm in Colorado. Uh, so is Cham. I was born in Aurora, grew up in Indiana, and then moved back here like three or four years ago. But and then uh, Mike, you're in what Massachusetts? Yeah, yeah, Col Colorado boy. I don't have to worry about all that. Granted, I watch it with a lot of interest, and I really want DeSantis to just absolutely zip down his pants, pull out his dick, and just slap everybody in the room. Oh God, I hope so. I'm I'm loving this man so far. So, do you guys have any closing thoughts on the disaster that is Paramount's Halo? Let's just watch the train wreck and wait for that flaming caboose to go shimmer shimmying off of that cliff. Oh yeah. This thing's gonna get this thing's only gonna get worse before it gets better. Okay. Dude, dude, there's no I there's no way I see this show redeeming oh. itself. Dude. Oh no, I just got a bad thought from one of the replies. Brandon White, wonder if they'll try to make a statement about COVID with the flood. I could not uh, imagine them taking Halo into a oh no, the flood is spreading across our planet, but there's a bunch of extremists that won't take the vaccine that makes the flood not attack them. God, I mean, they kind of had that in episode 4 when they were talking about the fucking virus and shit. They just said that someone brought the virus there. I don't think they said anything on, you know, uh, the way, like, it, the, I don't know. For me, I'm like, for maybe I'm overly sensitive right now in terms of finding things to hate on this show for. But for me, it's like virus, you know, and, and plague and all that. And here, you know, they're talking about COVID. Um, Sam Brian Knight is asking what I think of Legend of Galactic Heroes season three. I haven't watched it. And somebody else was asking if there's actually anything good on TV right now. And streaming and um the latest season of Lupin the third just wrapped up and that was really good. Uh Jobless Reincarnation was also a season two was also really good, just wrapped up. It had a special that dropped out too long ago. The anime is um, good so far. Uh I've been reading ahead in the 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 books. I don't like the next arc that we're gonna get. I just thought it was boring as shit, but that's fine. Boring series aren't necessarily bad if they, you know, shape up after a short duration. Um, you, Mike, is there anything on TV that's actually good that you're aware of right now? On television? No, I haven't. I, here's the thing. I'm, I'm not a show person. I'm a movie person. I TV shows are just too spread out for me, really. I prefer my stories kind of compartmentalized a little bit. So, Oh, shit. Oh, I sorry. Just, the, the, form, the format is what bugs me. Yeah, I'm not I'm not that big of a TV person myself, uh, but I like anime. I like cartoons. It seems like, you know, I'd prefer a movie with live action stuff most of the time. Um, uh, Rise of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero is out, and it's on season two, two episodes out. Uh, that's uh, so that's that was a good show. Um, there's also. Um, oh, uh, well, this one wasn't from this year. That was from what was it? Uh, Vinland Saga is going to be getting a second season soon, and that was a really good fucking show. Uh, would I ever go on EFAP? Uh, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't think, know much about the show and format, honestly. Honestly, as someone who's been watching them since the season five days, while I like their content, uh, it's nicer to be in smaller groups for a lot of reactionary stuff. Once you get too many people, it feels like you just have either a lot of people talking at the same time or people are having to be kind of roadsided for other people to speak. It, it just watching it, I know I'd be really irritated and dealing with that. Um, when we were talking about the the shows, um, I, th- I believe it's pronounced uh, Ari Fureta. Is, uh, it's supposed to be one of those isekai types, but uh, that's got its first season and second season. Uh, I believe the second season happened sometime earlier this year, but that's a very solid one to watch. Uh, I see they also recommend uh, recommendations are My Dress Up Darling, Spy Family, Golden Kume. Yeah, maybe I'll watch one of those shows tonight. Uh, I will agree with uh, Omega. Uh, Altered Carbon, while I haven't watched the entire season, uh, it, it is definitely nice. And Ari for uh, is it Ari Freta solid? I don't know what they mean by solid. Uh, in, in other words, that I think it's good. Oh, it, oh, oh! In that context, it, I was thinking Metal Gear Solid context, like a has, subtitle or. It, it's it's a somewhat similar story to Shield Hero. It's just that the character is not absolutely you know useless in the early aspect. So Mako. Do you th- how how much worse how what do you give the season so far out of ten and how where do you think it's going to end like from what uh, you've seen so far what do you give it and where uh, you know what is your prediction for the the finale? So, I I started the series off with a six out of ten for episode one. I could I could enjoy the first fifteen to twenty minutes of the episode, and then we got an entire thirty minutes of characters not acting like they were supposed to, and I was like, okay, well, it's whatever. It might not be this bad for the rest of it. Two through four put me immediately onto a this is like a three out of ten show. I wouldn't want someone to watch this if they were actually looking for something good to watch. I very much see them going down a very stupid path with maybe next episode and then potentially eight and nine. I can easily see them being very terrible uh, episodes that don't go anywhere or do something completely negative for what they've tried to set up. Now, Mike. Yeah. As somebody who has only seen the first episode and you are hearing about all of this. Mm Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on the show? Just a summary. Okay, so everything in the first episode was pretty much terrible. Uh, the in terms of every aspect of the filmmaking, the editing was terrible. The special effects were terrible. The prop design was was bad, and stuff was not fixed. Uh, the acting was not fairly good. There was a lot of child murder for no real reason, um, and the 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 story made very very little sense. So there wasn't really anything that I liked out of the first episode at all. Um, and that's the problem, is that if you have an, a, a TV series, the first episode is supposed to be the one that gets the hooks in you. It's the one that makes you want to watch episodes two through nine of the series. So if your first episode is this lazily put together or this haphazardly slapped together, because I don't know if maybe this was done at the last minute, it might make a couple of different things from the production standpoint make sense. If that's what you're looking at, then you can only imagine how much worse the following episodes are because those were the ones that had even less time put into them from a post-production standpoint. Definitely less effort. And that's saying something considering the fact they fucked up on actually CGIing most of the fight scenes in episode one. Oh, oh yeah, no, I remember that. that shit. Yeah, they, they didn't put the skins on the elites. There was what the blood spatter looked like it was out of a fucking video game. Uh, like they that. didn't. They didn't CGI one of the weapons that the Spartans used for like. They CGI Master Chief's. Uh, they they CGI Master Chief's auto rifle hitting the ground. No, uh, CGI no, no, no. Smoke. His his BR that's supposed to be a fucking. Uh, but his uh, DMR that was supposed to be uh, DMR, single shot. Uh, DMR was firing full shot, auto. Firing full auto. Yep. God, the wooden plasma pistol. And they did that. Sa- yeah. They had that same problem with one of the sidearms on the chick's thigh as well. But it might have been a lighting issue. Maybe, but... yeah. But still, that yeah. But still, that that 
even with even without that one, the rest is still egregious on every level. I mean, I was spotting like simple editing mistakes that I've gone I've gone over a couple of them with you. One, 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 the more specific one was the the shouldering of the rifle by Master Chief. Yeah, and it's just the editing is terrible. And the thing that bugs me about it is that it was it was very easily avoidable, and it could have been done in an instant by somebody who was editing in a suite. You yeah, know, especially any, considering that they didn't done. have to, especially anybody considering they done. all had their helmets on at the time and they could, they could just ADR in the lines differently. Exactly. Yeah. All those lines are ADR in and post anyway. They're, they're, they're not actually being, I mean, even they're probably being said by the actors in the scene so they, they could get their cues correctly. But ultimately, the lines that you're hearing when you're watching the series are recorded in a fucking sound booth after the fact. So yeah, they could have mm-hmm. made them say anything they wanted them to say. Um, but, but yeah. But if your first episode is that lazy, I don't expect the rest to be any good. Because if you didn't get the hooks in me with the first episode, I'm not going to get invested in episode two or three or four. Well, you know, some, every once in a while you can get a series like that where they'll say like, oh, yeah, no, just wait it out for like two episodes. Trust me, wait it out for two episodes. You know, sometimes the, those exist, but this is not one of them. Well, here's the thing. They, the first episode at least had it in the same ballpark as this is a first person shooter. So here's a shooter setting for the first episode and they had proceeded for the next three technically three and a half because that was only for the f- first 15 minutes of the the uh show that they did all that crap mm-hmm. the entire rest of it has been freaking nothing like a a shooter or wartime setup it's all about it's all been about emotions so none of it freaking feels like a halo uh setting just um the the idea of walking into a pitch room i want to make the master chief go on a fee fee fest yeah just well, the fuck uh real, real quick just for comedy section uh brandon white in the the comments did they acknowledge master chief's uh jerk off suit function no sadly they have not nope. and apparently call sign coyote is saying that the dmr does have a full auto setting so i might have to go look into that but we've been going on here for a uh, half, half hour longer than intended, and we are all baked or buzzed and tipsy or any combination of this shit. So we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this one up. So Mako, Mike, is there anything you want to say before uh, we drift off? I am wading into a cesspit once a day every week, and I would much rather not, but fuck it. I. <laughs> <laughs> But because I know that because I know that there's gonna be plenty to rip apart in these shows, I will take the fucking hit and do it. Uh, Here's my advice: just go play the games. It's better. Seriously, watch Nightfall. Watch Forward of the Dawn. You could you you could literally just go watch the fucking storylines on YouTube if you don't even have the consoles of the games, and you would still have a much better experience than fucking watching a second of this. Or, like I joked earlier, you could just play Destiny 2. The fucking Christ, The Mandalorian is a better fucking Halo show than this. Pedro Pascal didn't bitch. And it didn't do, and it still did wonders for his fucking career, too. So don't give me this shit about how the actor wanted his face to be seen. So, anyway, everyone, it's been great having you around. Mike, Mako, thanks for the fun. Everybody, thank you for watching all that. And we'll talk to you guys in the next one. I curse you. I curse you with having to watch the first episode. I go, curse go. the world. Curse me all you want. You do you, you do this of your own. No, no, free. no. I know I know that you two have already watched it. I'm saying everybody in chat, even if you've heard us say <laughs> it's bad, go watch the first episode. Don't don't give them the view. It is number. free. Pirate it. Oh, yeah, it's on saying, YouTube. Yeah, pirate, it's on pirate. YouTube and the, the ratings on it on YouTube are absolutely terrible. So <laughs> that'll be a point to end on. Uh <laughs> Uh, let's find the viewership. Uh, I haven't even looked at it no, since they did it. Trailer. Uh, where's the fucking? Did they take it down? Let's see. I'll I'll check real quick. Uh, Paramount Plus was the site they posted it to, and yeah, no, they it took is officially it down. Gone. Yeah, they took it off. Maybe it maybe it didn't get anywhere near the numbers they wanted it to for day one, so they just took it down. They, it, people were laughing at something like it, it was having a very hard time cracking views. It was something like the first 24 hours, it didn't even hit a hundred thousand views. 
Yep, I'm looking on. Uh, there's an article with the link posted, and you used to be able to click on the link. It now says video unavailable. This video yeah, is private. They, they 100 took it down because it wasn't getting views. That is oh hilarious. My now, now, God. now keep in mind, this article that I am seeing the link on was posted on April 1st of this year. That would have meant so, that it was so still up means, until April of this year. Yes, which means that they Jesus. would have they would have had it. Um, uh, they would have been taken down sometime in between April first and now. Well, if, if we're talking about it, because the the shows were releasing what Thursdays. Yes, they were doing. So the fourth was on fourteenth. The third show was on the seventh, and then the thirty first was the release of the second show. So that means shortly after the release of the second episode of the show is when they decided to absolutely nuke it off of YouTube. Damn, that's uh, it's impressive. Not the, it's not the trailer we're talking about. They actually posted the first episode to YouTube because the Paramount yep. numbers were so low. I, I I have it on on multiple sites now because they all had the original link to the YouTube video. They are all unavailable. Jesus. So yeah, they so are. Why, they are. Now now this makes me wonder if that second season is going to keep that green light. They're probably going to still double down on it. That I know how these companies work. They're all down to fucking waste money if it means getting the message across. Anyway, everyone, we've gone even longer than expected. So <laughs> take, take it easy, everyone.